Thank you, Brother Lord. The Lord bless you. Morning, morning. Morning, friends. Happy to be back in the house of the Lord. I just called back there a few moments ago to pray for an old minister. And uh, he just had a blackout, like nothing fine wrong with him. He just is an old saint of the Lord. And on the road down here, Satan tried to make me sick to vomit too. And I said, we just go ahead and pray for one another. <laughs> and so uh, his brother Coggins, we know him very well here at the Tabernacle. He comes from up in Carolina. And uh, he's been very, very sick, just, just standing black out. But don't seem to be one thing wrong with him, not physically. So it just the devil trying to tempt him. So he's a great tempter, and he's a good one, too. <laughs> you heard the story about the old sister that went to church, wouldn't say nothing bad about anybody. So what do you think about the devil? He said, well, he's a good adversary. <laughs> so that's what he, what he is. We are happy this morning to be in the house of the Lord again this week, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And now I was going to speak on the subject this morning, sheltered by the blood. And uh, it seemed like that the Holy Spirit kind of changed my mind on that. And um, I have another subject of teaching. Because then after I said last night, why would he change my mind on a subject of that type, sheltered by the blood. You understand where the text would be, Israel, under the blood, marching to the promise, you see. And I may speak at some other time. So um, I remembered in a dream that I had here not long ago, and I, in this dream, I was supposed to be storing up food in the tabernacle, you see. Here in this dream. How many remembers it a few weeks ago having the dream? I couldn't give you the interpretation of it. And if it won't take me very long, I'll just tell you if you'd like to hear it. It's seldom that I dream anything. It's just got any sense to it. It's usually I go to bed late and then wake up and be nervous or tired. You dream and go to sleep and dream and wake up. You know how it is. A nervous a person like myself. And uh, I was uh, out with Brother Woods and Brother Sothman. And the Lord had just been giving people coming up with down in this was at uh, Tucson, Arizona. And the Lord just perfectly in every case giving dreams, interpretations. Now, you see, when anyone gives, tells me about a dream, the only way I can give the interpretation, I see that dream over. And many of you here know that some of you telling me things that you didn't tell me all about it in the dream. But when I got it over again, I got what you didn't tell. See, And so uh, you have to see it over again. And then he tells you, therefore, sometimes it's cutting. Sometimes it's hard, disagreeable to the person. But you must be truthful because it's the word of the Lord. See, Because they're expecting that. And it's it never. Lord has been good to me to let it always be right. And so... That night, I, I went to sleep, and I dreamed myself. And I thought I was um, a fellow I used to box with years ago. Many of you old-timers, I was just thinking of Brother Roy Slaughter standing up there at the door. he um, been with, it, I guess, by one of the oldest members here in the church. Brother Slaughter, I guess, is right around one of the oldest members. And I, I just, while I'm talking about him, there's many good points about Roy Slaughter that people don't know about. That's right. He's my brother, and I'd rather give him a little uh, bouquet now or a bud than a whole reef when he's gone. That's right. There's many fine points. Brother Roy's been a real brother to me, him and his family. Live out there and worked hard for that little family and raised a fine bunch of children. I know all of his girls and his boys and preached his little boy's funeral when it died. And I remember one time here, we had a fellow working on the church and the and uh, he was supposed to do it just as a carpenter, and we didn't have much money, and he was going to put this interior in here. And um, somebody come along and wanted to work, and he didn't do it, and sat around and claimed he worked a half hour or something and hurt his foot, and then he just enough to bring suit against the church and sued us for $10,000. Well, we didn't have nothing. We didn't know nothing about it till they already got judgment. You see, to sue the, the man, he didn't have insurance. 
And so then it fell on us. We didn't have to pay. And I'll never forget the night, sitting right along back in there, that Roy went out in the pocket, an old, excuse me, Brother Roy, old ragged pocketbook, pulled out what checks he had from his slop hall and things like that. said, well, Brother Bill, I'll put this on. Little old Evelina, his sister, she's probably sitting around here somewhere now. She said, Brother Bram, my little old house is only worth $300, but we'll just put that on it. That's genuine, real material, if you talk to me. That's, in my book, that's real. I remember then, a little later from that, I'm on my first meeting out. I was in St. Louis, one of my first big meetings, and a telegram come in. My little girl is laying at the point of death, Brother Slaughter, come at once. I just walked over and started putting the clothes in the suitcase. That's all there was to it. I just couldn't turn him down. And here we come. I come home, walked into the room. Uh, nurses down in the hospital there at the Catholic hospital in Albany give up his little girl. Just as we walked in the room, the Lord Jesus healed her. There she was. Right? See? And like bread upon the water, it will return to you someday. Off of my subject. But <clears throat> going back to the... Beginning, and I used to box. And there's a fellow named here in the city. A poor fellow drinks very bad now. <clears throat> One of his boys is on the police force. Smith, George Smith. They called him Six Second Smith. He went to training me for boxing when we had, uh, before the Golden Glove started. We was out here at the government. And in that, well, he was the roughest person I ever seen. He just hit me and I'd just go whining <laughs> through the air. And, uh, I come back, I said, you don't have to be so rough about it, see? I said, you didn't knock the breath out of me. He said, I tell you, Billy, said, no matter how well trained you are and how much athletic experience you have and how strong you are for your size or anything like that, said, a lick stops the blood when it hits like that. And said, you might hate me now. But when you get up there in the ring yourself, said, you appreciate it. Said, your body builds up that to come back quick. If you get hit, it'll just fall over and you lay there and take account. But if your body is built and can stand the licks, said, then when you hit it, hard lick hits you, said, then when you, you can come back quick, said, back to your feet again. Get knocked out of the ring, jump back in. He just got through, knocked me from out of the ring. So he said, um, you have to just do that, see? And he liked to kill me. He's about 30, 40 pounds heavier than I was. And he, could, and he was a fighter and I was just a student. So... He's almost killing me. He said, but you appreciate that when you get in the ring. I found out that was the truth. And I've heard of sergeants in the army train them boys and rugged that hate that sergeant. But when it come to combat, they love him because rugged training. That's why I try to train Christians. Don't bob off your hair. Don't wear makeup. Don't do this. Give it rugged. You appreciate me when it comes to, to the other road. So training. See Getting that training right. Let's, let's keep right with the Word. It might be rugged, cut denominational differences to pieces, but you appreciate it when you come down at the end of the road. See, you stood by the book. So, wife took, uh, had her arm in mine, and we walked up, and George Smith, now he's, I guess he's a gray-headed man, I guess he's seven or eight, ten years older than I, and he was back in the ring, and he was battling away, and these young fellows that come up, great wide-shouldered boys, they couldn't match him at all. They just, he would just whip them in a minute. And a young fellow said, I can whip that old man. I know I can. So a great big athletical fellow jumped into the ring there. He didn't last half a minute. He come back out and said, I don't know where it comes from. But he sure is a man. And just then, I looked at my wife in the dream. And I said, wife, you know, he gave me my first training. And then, you know, dreams are funny. I come down to a, a big sea. And the waters was real choppy. And the boatman, uh, Meaty, wasn't with me then, my wife. And then in this, the, the boatman come over there and he handed me a little canoe about two foot and a half, three foot long. And he said, it's real white, just plastic wh and white. He said, here's your boat. Oh, I said, I couldn't cross for that uh, and that. And he said, well, so that'll run 50 miles an hour up and down this way. I said, it might up and down the shore, but it won't out there. See, I said... He said, well, go with them. And I looked, and here sat Brother Woods and Brother Fred Sothman, the two brethren was with me, the night I dreamed the dream. And they were sitting in a green canoe with a lot of rigging in it, camping rigging, tents and so forth. And they were sitting there. He said, go with them. I said, they're not even boatmen. 
I said, I know that. I said, I am a boatman, and I, I know about the canoe to handle it, but I said, they, they'll never, they couldn't make it, and I wouldn't go like that anyhow. Well, he said, they love you, and said, why don't you go back up here and store up? So I went back in the little place where we've been out at, a little place called Klondike, about 40 miles from any civilization, one little store for the ranchers and things. Looked like it was a Klondike, and it turned out to be this tabernacle. I was standing right here, and I was calling in great barrels of the prettiest food I ever seen. Reddishes looked like three foot long, and turnips and greens and potatoes and everything. He said, store in plenty of it, see? And I, I was standing there just storing it in, <laughs> and I woke up. I couldn't understand it. I thought it was just a dream and went on. Bothered Brother Woods and many of them. So here was the interpretation. I had to wait. It's like I've told you many times. Things has to happen before you can... Certain things, you bring it in line. Here was the interpretation. They, they, we have been anticipating overseas. Brother Minor Argenbright, a bosom friend of mine, was going to pay my wife and I's uh, expenses to tour Palestine. And we were going to go into Switzerland and on down into Africa. And uh, on a campaign uh, in June. And my wife and Rebecca and them was certainly thrilled to know they could go through Germany, England, France, and Palestine. There's a wait there until I made the African campaign and pick them up on the road back. And uh, they were all under great anticipation. You'd heard me say, if the Lord is willing, oh, if the Lord is willing, I aim to take that campaign overseas. I don't know exactly yet. So I was waiting on them. But here's what it was. This Mr. Smith, George Smith, that was my first trainer in there, and was more than a match for any of the young people that was in the land today in his fighting, was my first training in the prayer line. See, many times I bring the people up as visions, wait, add this one vision, that one vision. It never did work just good. Now, when I first started out, I never let a person, unless I found something in the line that wasn't just exactly right, and he stopped me himself. Thing, and told me about it. I go ahead and pray for the people, and my, the results is a hundred times because I got to, I'd pray for four or five hundred in one night. This way, maybe 25 or 30, maybe not that many, maybe 10 or 15 visions, and I'm, they got to pack me out nearly. Going back to that same thing again, see, back to my first training. After all, there's nothing on the field ever stood with it or can, see, because it's a word. It ain't some denomination, it's a word. See? And um, then, there, then you notice the next part, after that, Midi went away from the dream. When I come to the sea, that was going overseas. A brother argued by called me the other night, all thrilled, and said, Brother Bram, it'll be one big vacation. Brother Shakarin has had a heart attack. So the overseas meetings are canceled out. And they, the Swissly meeting, he wanted me to go there just for one night. And was to have that one night's meeting, and then the rest of us all go be vacation, just rambling around over the country. Now, which is very nice. Brother Oregon writes, oh, just tops of a Christian, a bosom friend to me and my family. And, uh, but you see, the little white plastic canoe that he wanted me to go in was the Word of God. And there's not enough preaching in it to call me across the sea. I said, uh-uh, not that. Just for that? Uh-uh. He said, then go like... Like, go with them, like they'd go. I said, they're not boatmen, preachers. I am a minister. If they went, it would be vacation altogether with a camping rigging in it. But I wouldn't do it. I turned it down. So there was the interpretation of, of the dream. See. And then Mr. Argerbright called me a few nights ago and told me that, at the, the of course, uh, we heard that the overseas meetings had been canceled on account of Brother Shakarin. And then uh, there is no, uh, there, the one in Switzerland, I only had one night. And I had, Meaty had to tell me first that she didn't want to go. So I called her from Florida the other night, or Georgia, and I told her, I said, Brother Oregon Rice called and said, we have to leave on the 20th of May. She said, that's out. That's out. See, children just take their examination and can't go. See, she had to turn it down herself because she was the one included. It was her vacation. And there it was. Even dreams, everything is for a meaning. Everything's got something somewhere. So dreams have interpretations. Now, coming back, I might say, so that you'll understand, this is tape, on the road coming home, just before I went out there, how many remembers me repeating it here, that 
a voice came to me in the room one morning after a vision and said about, told about the serpent and it being bound and not to fear anything. And he said, um, do not fear. He said, haven't I proven to be with you wherever you go? He said, haven't I proved to be with you on your hunting trips? You remember when I told about what Amen. I was going to get for that? He said, haven't I proved to be with you? And then a real sweet voice came and said, the never failing presence of Jesus Christ is with you wherever you go. And I know, but that we're moving up to something. I don't know what it is. I can't say. Coming home the other night or the other day, or just before I come home, I was fell into a vision, and I seen some little fellows, thin, looked like young boys or something, had on caps, and we were standing hunting, and I'd shot a mammoth, big brown-looking bear, and then they turned around and said to me, said, um, but there's some confusion about the meeting. And I said, no matter what the confusion is, if I suppose to go wherever it was, I'll go anyhow. See, it doesn't matter. And the vision stopped. I don't know where that's at, but this is on tape. It's going to happen. <laughs> Just remember, it's going to happen. It's a vision. So um, now, next Sunday, I'm going to be in Tennessee, the Lord willing, next Saturday night and Sunday with Brother uh, Emmy Littlefield at um, old... That Church of God headquarters up there, in Cleveland. Cleveland, Tennessee. Brother Emmy Littlefield at his church, the one I dedicated for him here two or three years ago, at Cleveland, Tennessee, next Saturday night and Sunday morning. This will be Sunday morning service only on Sunday. Now give me time, a family to go up with me, and we can come back. I promised him to come up and preach again in his church. That's next Sunday. Then the following Sunday, Brother Argenbright is going to be here with Brother Rowe, that a diplomat of Washington that's been served under three or four presidents there to be here on that Sunday and with a new picture. I want everybody to try to be here if possible for that time. I want to be here myself. The following Sunday is Easter. We expect a great meeting here Easter. Lord willing, I want to be here Easter Sunday. For, and we have sunrise service. There's usually baptism. All of you is going to be baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus be here for Sunday. And it's been anticipated or spoken a while ago, being that we don't have seating room, we may take the boys' club, seat seven or 800 just above here, right around a new club, right around the corner here, come back down here for baptismal service in, and go back up there so everybody can have a comfortable seat for Easter morning. We're going to try to look about it this week and uh, find out. Then, uh, the following service, beginning then on, I'll leave here on the, 20, on the 25th or 26th of the month, and then the... 7th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, and 10th. I'm way back up on the, out of Van, uh, Victoria Island, way back among some Indians where you have to go on a boat to get to them. A little missionary friend of mine, brother, I was with him last fall on a hunting trip, and I have a lovely home, him and his wife, and his arms and everything's all raw, different places. Well, that's what that was. It was some fleas, bedbugs and things. See, that, that living right out there where they just had to live in anything amongst those Indians. <clears throat> he had brought some of them over to the meeting, the chief. They're all Catholic, practically all. And the Holy Spirit went down through there and picked out that chief and all the ones with him and healed every one of them right there in the meeting. They just simply burnt that coast up and down with their boats going out there, commercial fishers up and down the coast. And Brother Eddie's calling... And I have a little feeling to go, see, to go over there. And then we leave there and have one day's travel from there and have two nights or three nights in Fort St. John. That's way up on the Alaskan Highway. And two nights there. Then coming home and the, um, I think it's the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th of June. Now here's a place that you all could go to these Amen. meetings here. Or be at um, Southern Pines. Yes. You know, the brother that gives such a nice ride up here not long ago, by the way, he sent me some more magazines. I ought to have brought them. I'll have them here next Sunday, the Lord willing. And um, uh, that's the Southern Pines, just about all six or eight hours drive from here. Southern Pines, North Carolina. Or is that South Carolina? North Carolina, yeah. (laughs) That's right. Then, right, then we leave there on the 10th and on the 11th and 12th with Brother... Uh, Bigsby at Columbia, 
South Carolina. And that's the man, the Presbyterian, that wrote the article. And to me, it struck me better than anything he ever had wrote about me. He was a Presbyterian, Doctor of Divinity, and he came into Chicago and wrote the article of, uh, I forget what it was now. Uh, it was real nice. I've got it somewhere. And uh, in a magazine, something about a Presbyterian uh, meeting a Pentecost or something like that. Pentecostal prophet to a Presbyterian something. And um, it'll be with him. Then last night we call Brother Roy Borders. It's already on the West Coast. And there's some of the people out there. He's got as many as 35 and 40 churches to cooperate in meetings. Sedalia, uh, California, and over Grass City, and from there, uh, Grass Valley rather, and from there on into Oregon, on up into uh, to Washington. And then Brother Oregon right coming in. We're going, planning on now, in the last week of July, to be in Anchorage, Alaska, to... Uh, Organize a chapter there for the Christian businessman following about a six or eight day revival. Now, I hope to have their hard, rough Alaska. You know how it is. Just prospectors and miners, and ham and eggs cost about $3.50 for a plate. And it's, it's really a rough place, but they need the gospel. Now, what I aim to do is these things that I'm teaching on here, storing up this food and getting it around. I want to go now. I have no. Definitely leading to any place, but I'm going sowing seeds. Amen. So that's my somewhere. Started. My wife, she's here somewhere. She got a letter from a lady over here in Illinois the other day. It just burnt into my soul and my heart. This lady said, Sister Branham said, there's no doubt but what many times and down through uh, since you've been married that you have to suffer a lot, Brother Branham being gone and having those children. And said the children, of course cry for their father and so forth, and said, I know what you mean because I have a lovely husband myself. She said, but I'll tell you my condition. She said, I, I've had four major operations the last four years. She said, I take around 15 or 16 tranquilizers a day. And she said, I take three different electron shots and so forth a week. And said, I put a bunch of sleeping tablets and the latest thing and uh, quieten the nerves and them shots, and then take as much as two double sleeping tablets at night and can't sleep. And she said, my doctor has told me to go on to the insane institution before I cannot return, and it might be a hope that it saved my mind. And said, and there's nothing in medical lines, nowhere could touch me. And she said, I was anticipating uh, suicide, planning it to leave my lovely husband and my little girl. She said, we live in Kansas. I love it because we see the grain ripening and think of the harvest. I think she was a Methodist. And said, and then over at the Methodist College in Bloomington, Illinois, they picked up a paper that I was to be there 11 months ago. Many of you remember the Bloomington meeting. You were there. And she said, my husband got me and some friends and took off and said, the Lord knew I couldn't stand it one more day. She's so far gone. And said, I was the first person, your son, Billy Paul, Give me a card. And that night when, when your husband called the numbers, I was the first one in the line to be prayed for. And said, as soon as I come to the platform, said, he told me in my life and told me what I'd done and everything, what all about it. And said, thus saith the Lord, it's over. Said, that very split minute, I've never had another pain. Said, I weighed 70-something pounds. I weigh 160-something now. And said, Sister hey, Branham, when you're lonesome, said, I know how you feel sharing your husband with the world and things like that, but said, just remember, a little Kansas housewife is free today because he's willing to mind the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I showed Billy, I said, Billy, I want you to send this over to that Methodist college. He reached over and got a pile and said, read some of these. I said, I, don't, I know they're wonderful, but this one's enough. This is just set the place. Did you hear that? Unclean, unclean, the evil spirits drawing Come out of his mind, out into the tombs. When Jesus came, he set the captive free. Amen. And Jesus is the Word. Amen. So take the Word, and it will set the captive free. Amen. Here I am talking, taking up my time, taking up your time. And so much to say. Let us bow our heads. Lord, 
As mortals, we know we don't have too much more time to talk. When I look out over this little hungry-hearted bunch of pilgrims that's come from the field, from farming, some of them has come from the public works, from working, and some of them drove across the mountains, the deserts, and the fields and swamps and gathered here and then have to stand up. But they are pilgrims. They don't belong to this world. They're only here as testimonies, as lights. It's set on a hill that gives light in the community where they're living. And then when they come together to be rededicated and charged with the Word. They stand, they cramp in their limbs and the, the old and the young alike. They love you, Lord. That's why they're here. Anyone knows that a person wouldn't come and drive for miles and stand along walls and leaning and legs are cramping just to be seen. And with this bunch, Lord, we're, we're poor people. We don't come and dainty dress. We come here to worship you. One purpose in our heart, one objective and one motive. That's you, Lord. I pray, God, that you'll richly reward them. May there not be a one pass through these doors today, but what will have eternal life? Then the toils of the road will seem nothing when we get to the end of the way. Amen. If they're sick, heal them, Lord. And now we just spoke of other meetings. Lord, without a definitely knowing that I'm going, if it be your will, just scattering the seeds. Amen. They'll come up if they fall on the right ground. And I pray, Lord, that you'll direct them to that right ground. Hallelujah. Laying on the platform or the pulpit, I should say, to hear this morning, is handkerchiefs. Little parcels. It means that people are sick, needy. Uh, oh, God of heaven who raised up Christ from the dead and has presented him to us in this last day in the form of the Holy Ghost. Uh, May he who is ominous present look down. Ominous mission knows all things. Omnipotent, all powerful. Watch over these little parcels and may they, when they touch the sick and the afflicted, may the Holy Spirit quicken that prayer uh, to the ears of God and may they be healed immediately. Uh, Lord, think of that poor little woman. I just quoted her testimony. Uh, Out there in Kansas today, happy, not a pain. No doctor can find anything wrong with her. No more pains, no more tranquilizers, no more sleeping pills, sleeps good and sound, everything's all right. Oh, Lord, truly, when you come, everything's all right then. We thank you for that. Now, Father, as we turn to the Word, bless thy Word. May it not return to thee void, but may it accomplish that which it has been purposed for and dedicated to. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Now... Can you hear all right, everybody? Back in the back, it's all right. Which is the best if I talk like this or talk like this? Over here? This side over here is better? Is that better for you all back there? All right, I'll pull this around here just a little closer then. <clears throat> uh, last Sunday of the week, I, I was a little late. Uh, I had a, quite a lengthy service. I don't like to be that way. And now, once in a while, it won't bother me a bit. But someone sitting down sees those standing up, would like to swap places with them a little while and rest them. It would be a very fine Christian act. And now, now maybe by, the, by this Easter, we may have another place to hold on the, the main service. Now we want to turn this morning. All you soldiers, get your... Your sword now, and we're going to declare war Amen. on the enemy. Amen. Amen. You used to sing a little song, you know, the fight is on, old Christian soldier.
face to face in stern array. You've heard the song. Amen. Armors gleaming, colors streaming, right and wrongs engaged today. See, that's right. The fight is on, but be not weary. Be strong and in his might hold fast. If God be for us, his banner o'er us, we'll sing the victor's song at last. That's right. Amen. We want to turn now to first to read the scripture reading found in St. John 10. The first five verses. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, the, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him. For for they know not the voice of strangers. Now, the subject this morning that I've chosen to teach on for a little while is wisdom versus faith. Wisdom versus faith. Now, there's only two sources, or by two sources, which we must live. Did you know that? Now, we, i got many scriptures written down here, and I want you to, we will probably refer to them as going along, and, and I'll try to be out as quick as possible, and won't try to just lay it out so you can take it from there on, see. But there's only two sources that we can draw our life from. And one of them is wisdom, and the other is faith. And if we think what wisdom produces, and then what faith produces. But those two sources, we're going back this morning and pick them up for the Sunday school lesson, and bring them up out of the Bible, and show what they are, and what they are going to do, and what they have done. By the help of the Lord. Now, faith and wisdom. Now, to begin with, we'll notice that in Genesis, the first chapter, we find that that faith was introduced and wisdom was introduced. And today, them two sources is still introduced. To the human race. We find out that God was the author of faith to believe, for the people to believe and to trust His Word. And Satan is the author of wisdom, trying to get the people to accept His wisdom and pull them away from the faith that's in God's Word. Those two sources. We find it so strange that Genesis' this seed chapter starts off that way. And we see that all things that we have today originally begin in Genesis. Because the word Genesis means the beginning. And if we see these things that were uh, today the way they are, they had to have a beginning somewhere. You have to chase everything back to a beginning. And here's a little thought for you. Everything that had a beginning has an ending. But it's the things that did not have a beginning that doesn't end. The only things that's eternal. 
Therefore, I'd like to ask the question, how could we ever make sense out of the word of the eternal sonship of God? If he was a son, he had a beginning. If he was eternal son, how could he be a son and be eternal? For son is, is a product of something. But if he was, uh, he was, could not be an eternal son. There's no such a thing. The eternal son of God. Because if he, if he never had a beginning, then he cannot be nothing but eternal. But if he was a son, he had a beginning. So he cannot be an eternal son. It was the eternal God manifested in a son. <laughs> See? Eternal God. Because God is the only thing that's eternal. And the only way that we can ever live is because we have eternal life. This body dies. All of our parts die, but the part that's eternal is God and can not die. Now, now the Word, the Bible, is eternal because it is God in word form. And what was in God in His thoughts before there was any spoken word, it was God. You see it? It was God. Therefore, being predestinated, we who are saying we trusting I'm along with you, that was predestinated was the, the things that was with God in eternity. And then if you are a born again child of God, you are you got the Holy Spirit in you, you are the manifestations of God's spoken word before it was a word. It has to be a thought before it can be a word. A word is a spoken thought. And the thoughts was in God, and then we were in God in eternity. And we were spoken into existence by the word. Oh, what a by what word? This word, God's word. Now, God is the author of faith. Satan is the author of wisdom. For God gave His first children His Word and told them they must believe this and put a death separation punishment if they fail to believe it. And Satan comes around and tries to offer to Eve wisdom. You will be wise. Knowing right from wrong like God. Now, see, to start with, you see right quick that wisdom comes from the devil. That's strange, isn't it? But it's true. Wisdom comes from the devil. He is the author of wisdom. Now, of course, anything that the devil has is a perversion of the original. Sin is a perversion of righteousness. Adultery is a perversion of a, of a legal act. A lie is a perversion of the truth. And so, the, the wisdom that I want you to get straightened out on before we start, there is a wisdom of God. A wisdom of God is stay with His Word. But Satan in his wisdom tried to twist the word. So that's the wisdom I'm speaking of. There's a certain amount of faith that goes with Satan. In order to, to accept Satan, you've got to believe Satan. So there is a perverted faith to a perverted thing. And anything that would try to twist the word of God to make it say something that it doesn't is the wrong spirit. See? Offering wisdom against God. God's wisdom. So we're going to refer to it as wisdom and not Satan's faith, 
Many of those people that believe that are sincere and believe just with all the faith that they got that they're right. See, you have to watch the blanket stretches two ways now. But he, they are, the only way to be sure is come back to the original word. That's where everything is based on the word. Now we find that these two fra- factions is, or sources is one wisdom and the other in faith, and they've versed one another since creation in the Garden of Eden. Now, there's children on both sides. Now, what is the, the wisdom we're talking about? Something that will not agree that all this word is the truth. Amen. It's something that will take away from the truth, expressing itself as a higher knowledge. More wisdom. And if wisdom of that sort come from Satan, his children live by that wisdom. And if the faith of God came through God and God is Word, God's children lives on faith. The Bible said the just live by wisdom. Faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. Not what he can learn, but what he can believe. Amen. All right. Now, now we find out, let's take wisdom first. Wisdom has reasoning. Faith has no reasoning. But wisdom has reasonings. Let's just start Turn it in the Bible. And let's turn now to Genesis, the third chapter. And Genesis. And just teach this. Now, what are we doing, trying to do this morning? Follow what the Lord said. Lay up food. You're going to need it one of these days. Lay up food. Now, Genesis 3, 1. Let's read now. See how wisdom has reasonings. And the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, has God said, believing, saying the word, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden... God has said, ye shall not eat of it, quoting the word, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, faith holds to that. See? Now watch. The serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. A reason. Reasoning. God is too good. God's too merciful. He loves you too much. You hear that same old devil today. God's too good to do this. God won't do this. God won't punish. He'll do just exactly what His Word said He'd do. Ye shall not surely die. See what's He trying to do? Getting her to reason with Him. In a minute that you reason on God's Word, then you're losing faith. Amen. Don't have no yes, no's, maybe so, stay right with it. See, Eve had the right approach, but she listened to his reasoning. There's just so many people today that has the right knowledge that knows that this word should be God's word, and it is God's word, but they stand and let some seminary student reason them out of it, away from the Holy Spirit. Away from the things of God. Reasonings. We're to cast them down. Now, fourth verse. For, I'm going to tell you why Satan said. I'll read the fourth verse, first then the fifth. One. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God knoweth that in the days you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and 
Ye shall be as God's knowing good from evil. See, he's given her a reason. Would you like to be equal with God? Take. In other words, you want to really be right with God? Take my advice. Listen to me. God don't mean that. He just said, when you hear that, get away from it. Amen. That's right. That's the hiss of the serpent. It sounds reasonable. But don't reason at all. Just believe it. What God said. Now, when the, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, see what it was? His reasoning brought her to know that it was right. It was true. And that it was pleasant to the eye and a tree to be desired to make one have faith. To make one have knowledge. Make one wise. See what it was? Satan presenting knowledge. Knowledge that was contrary to the Word. One to make one wise. She took of the fruit and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat and their eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now, what started? Reasoning. See, faith has no reason. You don't reason at all. You believe. When you're prayed for and accept God's word for healing, don't reason with your feelings. Don't reason with nothing else. There's no reasoning to it. God said so and that settles it. Oh, how I'd like to stop here a few minutes and rest on that and take a text out of it. Can't do it and preach these about 40, 50 uh, texts I got rolled down here. But reasoning. When the Lord gives a vision, I just tell you my own little infant way. The Lord gives a vision of something's going to happen. Why, I don't care what's contrary to it. And remember, everything that can be presented contrary, Satan will do it. He'll try to reason. You can't do it. For instance, that what I just quoted a few moments ago about going... Now, this was kind of off the beaten path just before my mother went. And the Lord knew I wasn't going to be able to keep those uh, appointments with those brethren by going hunting and gave a vision and sent me all the way into British Columbia. And when we got there, the guide said, I've never seen a silver tip, and I've lived here all my life. And besides, we we're going to plumb up into sheep country on horses. There's no silver tips. There's no, you ain't going to get up there. See, trying to... See, trying to move away. Reason. Satan said to me, it'll be, uh, you, just, you just misunderstood the vision. But I didn't. It's going to be, thus saith the Lord. And when the caribou came up and we got that which was in the vision, as you all know, then he said, the guide said to me, a very fine brother to be with him now in a few weeks, young Christian. He said, Brother Brandon, my brother had the epilepsy. And you rode up on that horse that day and told me a certain thing to do and my brother's epilepsy would cease. He said, when I did exactly what the Holy Spirit told you to tell me, said he's never had a spell from that day. Yeah, my. He said, now here we are on top of this mountain. And for three miles right down, there's not even a bush four inches high. Nothing but caribou moss. A few blueberries and they only get two or three inches high. He said, caribou moss and blueberries, plumb to the timber line, and our horses are hitched in the timber line. And now, according to what you told me before we come here, that somewhere between here and where that boy stand with that checkered shirt on, you're going to kill a nine-foot silver-tipped grizzly bear. I said, that's thus saith the Lord. See, what was it? Satan trying to get me to disbelieve that. We started down the mountain. Closer we got. He kept saying, Brother Bram, we're only about a mile from it now. I said, are you doubting, bud? Not at all. We got within about a half a mile. He said, we're only a half a mile now. I said, that's right. He said, just think, in a half a mile. <laughs> Casting down reasonings. 
He said, look, we can see everything right before us. There's nothing out there. But I said, the God who gave me the Word can create one there. Don't reason, just believe it. Don't pay attention to reasons. That has nothing to do with it. Just believe what He said. That's all. And I was standing there, looked up on the hills everywhere. Just yellow caribou moss. Sun going down. Hills beautiful. You could see any little spot anywhere for three miles up the mountain, right above me. And when I turned to look, about two miles ahead of me, or a mile and a half or two miles, stood a nine-foot silver tip grizzly. Hallelujah. How he got there, I don't know. <laughs> but he was there. See, don't reason, believe. No matter what the circumstances, don't pay no attention to circumstances. Believe. Now, God said that the day you eat there, that day you die. Satan said, let me tell you something. See? Uh, that, that's, oh, yeah, we say God's true, sure. That's right. We believe that word. Oh, Satan said, I believe that real, sure. But listen, let me tell you. He didn't exactly mean that. He did mean that. He meant just what he said. Satan said, now, look, I'll tell you why he did it. He really, you see, you're, you're not wise, yet you haven't got any wisdom. You're just like a sheep to be led. You're not your own. That's the way God wants you. Amen. You've never, you ain't got no PhD yet. You, you, yeah. you just don't have enough education. See? But uh, I've got wisdom. And I'll prove it to you. Now look, you don't know what's right and wrong. You know there is such a thing, but you don't know what it is. Let me show you how it's done. That's all he wanted to tell that woman. That's all he wanted to do. Let me show you how it's done. She said, but we'll die. I said, surely God won't do that. But He knows that you'll be wise too. See, putting His wisdom against God's Word. There's the wisdom that I'm talking about. See, wisdom against faith versus faith. There's the first battle. God's Word helps study and truth. When they partook of the forbidden, they died and have ever since. See, there's where proved right there beyond a shadow of doubt. Now we're going to run it for a little while. Now, I had Genesis 3, 1, 17, and now, or 1 to 7, rather. And now, now where wisdom has reasonings. How many believes that? Now say, Amen. Amen. You say, now, the doctors say, well, I tell you, I look, take this little woman who just gave the testimony out. Doctor says, nothing you can do. You're done gone. There's no hopes for you. Go off the insane institution. Take her over there. She said, before I go there in one of those cells, I'll kill myself. And then what? God! Come on the scene. And through her advertisement somewhere in a paper, way over in Kansas, from Bloomington, Illinois, she heard, Faith cometh by hearing. Amen. Well, her husband got her together. They were real sweethearts, loved one another. Think, four years and four major operations. Fifteen, sixteen tranquilizers. That's enough to kill a mortal. See? And all those shots two or three times a week. With, I know one of them was Lexron. And I forget what the other one was. It's something for mental condition. She's taking these shots. And besides that, two sleeping tablets and couldn't even sleep with that. Misery, sick, all day, all night, year in and year out. Nothing to be done. But faith cometh by hearing. See? Now, when she got there, God placed her on the platform. First one. See? And in what, well, what, when I walked up to her and I said, How do you do, sister? How do you do? She never heard nothing about this. She knew nothing of it. But said, you are Mrs. So-and-so. You come from Kansas. Now, quickly, that gets her to uh, thinking. Wait a minute. I just heard him say that Christ was the same yesterday day, and forever. And here we prove in the Bible tonight that Christ promised to appear in the last days in his church in the things that they did down at Sodom and so forth as he preached on, which is my opening sermon for the... Now, here I see it going on right here. Amen. See? Now... Yes. Now, you have been to several doctors. You've had four operations. Where's he getting that information? 
Where does that come from? That little bald-headed man don't know that. Where does it come from? And uh, on your road over here, such and such a thing. Say. See? Now, that's exactly what he just got through preaching about. That's the word. But you know, Satan said, you know, you accept that your pastor, that don't have nothing to do with it. See? Cast away reasoning. But your doctor said, you've got to go to the insane institution. Cast away reasoning. I'm waiting to see what God's going to say about it. Then God, I didn't know what to say. Then the Spirit picked it up and blasted it out. She believed it. She never reasoned. Year after year after year, nervous breakdowns, mind gone, operations and everything, all these things. Why, it's unreasonable to think I could be healed here in a second. But she didn't think about reasonings. She just believed. Faith did it. Hallelujah. And she was healed that instant. If you'd like to write to her, well, Billy can give you her address. All right. Now, now faith, wisdom will reason. Now, but faith don't have no reasoning. It does nothing but hold to the Word. It holds a promise. Now, let's read a little bit. Let's turn to Romans 4th chapter and read just a little. And it's... Until we get pinched really for time, we'll just read these scriptures. Romans, the fourth chapter, because I really like to read the Word. It does you good to, to read it. Romans, the fourth chapter, and let's begin with the 17th verse. Listen, Paul, writing the commentary on Abraham's life. You know, there's nothing said about Abraham running down into a career and nothing in the commentary, you know. It's just Abraham believed God. Paul, that great apostle, writing the commentary on Abraham. 17th verse, as it is written. I like that. Amen. Paul staying with the word. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. I have. Abraham was 75 years old, lived with his wife since she was the, both of them were young. It was his half-sister. No children. He was sterile and she was barren. But God met him and said, I have, past tense, <laughs> before the foundation of the world, of course, have made you a father of many nations. Not of many children, but many nations. Just think of it. Before him, whom he believed, God, even God who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Amen. Don't reason at all. Listen. Calleth those things which were not as though they were, who against hope. My, not even a hope. What if he would have reasoned? <laughs> not even a hope. Who against hope believed in hope. <laughs> that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall my seed be. No matter what anybody else has said, God said so and that settles it. Oh, if Eve would only stay with that. <laughs> See? But she stopped to reason. Get some wisdom. Abraham didn't want any wisdom. He just wanted a word. God said so, and that finishes it. You know, I've preached on it many times. Went and bought up all the diapers and the pins and everything, got ready for the baby, and Sarah made the booties, and year after year passed. Bless God, we're going to have it anyhow. That's right. Why is she? The doctor said, well, she can't have it. You can't have it. And don't tell me we're going to have it anyhow. That's it. Against hope. Yet believed in hope. Hopes is all gone, yet he believed in it. Hallelujah. <laughs> When hope was done dead to me, hope was dead to every scientific search, every resource of wisdom. Hope was gone, but still he believed in it. What was it? Faith in it. Amen. Faith and hope when hope wasn't there. Amen. Mm, I'd like to linger on that a while. Yeah. Faith and hope when there was no hope there. Yet he still believed in hope. See? Because he said, he told me, so shall thy seeds be. Now, 19th verse. 
And being not weak in wisdom, knowledge, had his degree, no. being not weak in faith, ah, there you are, he considered not his own body now dead. Hope was gone, his body was dead. Listen, next, when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb, hope was dead, his body was dead. Sarah's womb was dead. What did he do? Next verse. He staggered not. Oh, my. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, wisdom, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Oh, my. What? And being faithful, Fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. Mm, no matter how, there's no reasoning to it at all. It just takes the, the word and holds on to it. Now, if this is the word of God, you believe it? Amen. Then why doubt any word of it? Amen. Any promise of it? Amen. How can you say that this is part and this is no good and this is that? Pick out what you want. You can't do it. It's either all good or it's none of it good. Right. So as soon as you see that it's a truth, take a hold of it. Don't turn it loose. No matter what circumstances, how they try to reason what you can't. Don't, don't do that at all. Stay right with it. God promised it. If I'm going now to take my stand for Christ and He's given me the Holy Spirit, His Spirit bears record of His life in me. Then when I come to die... Satan tries to say, now, nah, you see, you didn't belong to an organization. Stay right with the Word. Amen. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. No matter what that, Satan's got no reasoning about it. It's God's Word. Stay with the Word. Yeah. See, it casts down all reasonings. See, you don't have any reasoning. It just holds on to the Word. Hallelujah. See? Now, faith simply trusts in His Word. See? That's what He wanted them to do. That that. Now, you get the background now. That's exactly what God wanted the human race to do, to trust in every word He said. And Eve trusted a whole lot of it. But one little thing she accepted, well, if I become full of wisdom, maybe, maybe it was that way. Maybe it's supposed to be this way. See, then right there's where she lost her hope. That's where she started sinking, right there. That's where the whole human race went right down to the grave from right there. Because she doubted one word. Some of them say, well, I believe this is true. I believe that's true. I believe God can save, but I don't believe He healed. I believe the Holy Ghost, sure, fell on the day of Pentecost, but there's no place where there's anything that says the Holy Ghost fell after Pentecost. Oh, brother. <laughs> that's the way they say it. Call themselves the churches of Christ. Having a form of godliness, but denying the word thereof. Mm -hmm. That's it. See, you must believe. Don't reason. Believe. Don't try to have wisdom. Just believe the word. Wisdom tries to reason and present a better way. Now that's exactly what Satan told Eve. Now you're not going to die. Surely you won't, because God's a good God. He is a good God. And the only way I can trust Him to be a good God is that He'll stay at His Word. How can you expect me to be truthful when I'm not truthful? If I tell you one thing, do something else, my Word's pretty shaky. See, the only what makes Him a good God is because He spoke the Word and we're to live by that Word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Thank God's got to stay with that Word. That's what makes Him a good God. Amen. Now, if he said, well, I'll let him get by at this. I, I'll let him do this. Well, that's all right. Oh, I, I, I'll move over here. Well, he's a wishy-washy. See? He isn't God. He's, he's just an ordinary man. See? But to be a good God, he has to stay with his word. That puts every child. If he'll let this one commit adultery and this other one drink a little and, and this other one can do, lie a little and this other one can steal a little and this other one can do, do this, then make me just toe the line to come in. He's got one way. Amen. And all that goes in is going in that gate. Amen. Straight.
straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. Amen. No defilement to enter therein. Over in Revelation it said, all without are sorcerers, no. whoremongers, and dogs, and so forth. Blessed are he that doeth all his commandments, Amen. that he may have a right to the tree of life. That's right. There's one way. That's God. We don't reason out no other way. Well, uh, the Roman church says we are the church. Well, uh, that that Bible is not even worth the why. why it, it, you couldn't. Bishop Sheen said to try to live with it was like walking through muddy waters. See, see how you going to do that? See, then if he's right, then the Bible's wrong. The Bible's right. He's wrong. Now why are you going to say if God's word's right, it's either Bishop Sheen or or the Bible. Not only Bishop Sheen, but Reverend so-and-so and Dr. so-and-so and so-and-so. I wouldn't have called the man's name unless he said it on the radio. So he said that on the radio, so I guess I can call his name. Dr. so-and-so and so-and-so said so-and-so and so-and-so. Now, who are you going to believe, God or them? Well, say, it really doesn't mean it just this way. It means it just the way that it's written. Well, that's the first lie of the devil. He said to Eve, it just really doesn't mean that. Surely, God's too good to do that. You won't die. But they did. And they will every time. Yes. Not to meet the Word. Wisdom tries to take a, a better way. The way of modern. The way of popularity. The, an easier way. Find itself around just... Now you take a fellow here, maybe God go to dealing with him. Now when he thinks he has to come up, he has to make his wife come right to the line. He has to quit his card parties. He has to quit going to the dances. His wife has to let her hair grow out. She has to quit wearing makeup. He has to quit smoking, drinking. He's got to get out of that big society that he's in. He's got to humble himself at the altar. He's got to stand and be called a fanatic. Holy roller. Beelzebub. Anything can be called. Uh, I'll be religious, but I, I, I'll go down here and join the, this church down here. You're too narrow. There you are. See, there's a reason. Reason. Now we're going to get to a great point in a few minutes on that. See? How are you going to know which is right and wrong then? See? Now, tries to make the Word say something. Knowledge does. Knowledge, tr wisdom, tries to, to uh, reason. N wisdom finds a better way. There is no other way but God's way. Wisdom tries to point out and say, Oh, well, now, you know we couldn't do that in this time. We must do it anyhow. See? Tries to find an easier way. Tries to make the Bible say things that it does not say. Now you say, Oh, Brother Bram, now you're... Wait just a moment. <coughs> we'll go back to the seed again. What wasn't the devil trying to do with wisdom? Make God's Word say something that it didn't say. Amen. Amen. That's right. He tried to make God's Word say something that it didn't say. So, that's the way it comes today. When they try to make God's Word say something that it doesn't say, well, they say, well, I'll tell you, Brother Bram, you ain't got the right interpretation. The Bible said that, that prophecy is of no private interpretation. Why? Why is it a private interpretation? Why? The Word of the Lord came to the prophets. It is interpreted by the prophets. Amen. It can't be of an interpretation private. The prophet's already interpreted to you. There it is, written right there. That's the way it's supposed to be. God's got to have some fundamental something that all people's got to be judged by. <coughs> if it's by a church, which one's right? About 900 of them. <coughs> 900 different organizations, pardon me. Which one of them's right? How you know you're going in? What if you're a Methodist and a Baptist is right? What if you're a Pentecostal and a Presbyterian is right? What if you're a Catholic and a Lutheran is right? What if you're a Lutheran and a Catholic is right? See? There's got to be some foundation somewhere. So if the Word in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, see, the Word was in God. It was God. It was His thoughts that was with Him always. There, God's thoughts is as eternal as God is. Amen. Amen. That ain't skim milk, brother. See? Here it comes. God's thoughts was His Word. 
in the beginning. That's in eternity now when beginning first started. Time. In the beginning was the Word. God's thoughts. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Hey, his thoughts is what He was. That's you too. What your thoughts are is what you are. No matter what you try to live but something else, your thoughts is what you are. You might go along and act like a nice fellow, but in your heart you're an adulteress and whatever it is, that's what you are. Your thoughts. And God's thoughts was His Word that was with Him and in Him. And it was God. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word was made flesh. God's thoughts was expressed in a human body, made Amen. flesh, and dwelt among us. There you are. Now, if you have eternal life today, you are in God by God's being in you. You are God's express thought. Amen. Amen. Then don't listen to any reasonings. Let your crown be taken and give to another. <laughs> don't take any reasonings at all. Just believe what God said is the truth and stay with it. Amen. Reasonings through wisdom, tries to make the Word say something it doesn't say. Now, you say, is that true, Brother Branham? Well, let's just go back to Genesis and find out. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter of Genesis, and we're going to read the, the, the fourth verse. See, if, if wisdom tries to make the Word say something that it isn't. The third chapter of Genesis, the fourth verse. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. See? What it presents? What is it? Trying to make the Word say something that it doesn't say. Okay? God said, You shall die. Wisdom, as Satan was presenting to her, said, You shall not surely die. See, it's trying to make the Word say something that it isn't so. That's what wisdom is today. Oh, brother, how are we carrying on that? Seminaries, schools of theology, that's their very nest. That's their grassroots. It's trying to make God's Word say something that it doesn't say. Amen. I challenge anybody to show me the Apostles' Creed in the Bible. Yeah. Amen. I challenge anybody to show me communion of saints in the Bible. Yeah. Amen. Both Protestant and Catholic believe it. I challenge you to show me any of those things in the Bible. See, it's the grassroots of wisdom trying to reason. Our warfare is not carnal, but mighty. Amen. <laughs> Casting away all reasons. See? Pulling down the strongholds of Satan. Amen. A great, flowerly, beautiful creature. Not a slick greaser. No, no. That's on the inside. <laughs> but outwardly, sin is twice as pretty. You know sin's beautiful? How many men in here and women is past 50 years old? Raise up your hands. I didn't know what to ask the women, but I, I, we all admit the truth. I want to ask you a question. Do you see today that women are twice as pretty nearly as they used to be on the run average across the world? If that's so, raise up your hand. Sure. They're twice as pretty as what they used to be. Get some old pictures. Look at grandmother, her long skirts, braid of hair hanging down her back. She wasn't so attractive to look at. Look at the modern one today. A little skin down dress in every form she can't move without sinning. Walking, tipping down the street with all the makeup and cosmetics of Max Factor can put on her nearly. Fixing her hair like some little girl wearing a little skirt just up about above her knees if she's got on any at all. 
but you look at her, she's pretty. Satan knows how to do it. He's the author of beauty. That type of beauty which results in sin. The earth itself is a womb. Where did God place His seeds? Where seeds put? In a womb. God puts seeds. And what does man do? Like devils in a womb. He'll make a child deformed if he can. That's what devils has done on the earth. High breeding. Making creatures is not so. I better leave off of that. I never get to the rest of this year got rolled down. You know what I mean. That's the reason there's a deformed creation about to be cast. God's finished with it. The world's all out of order. Everything's wrong. The streams are polluted. The air's polluted. Filth stink. An old Indian not long ago said, White man, I don't want to live any longer. I'm through with fighting. He said, Where's my babies? Are they starved to death? Where's my wife? He said, Before you come here with your women and whiskey and sin, we live in peace. That's our grounds. God give it to us, but you're taking it away from us. You'll pay for it someday. Look at it today in that big, pretty deserts and mountains strewn with stink, sin, whiskey bottles, beer cans. Every place is full of taverns and tommy rot. Reno, Nevada, in that great desert, there's nothing but a prostitution. The great cities are... That even the air and the atmosphere is contaminated. Once the pretty mountains grow, now she's cut up with all kinds of everything else. Where the trees grow, they're cut out. Where the deserts, the waters flow free, it's contaminated. The whole world is going to have a a cast. The earth's going to give forth her child from the seed, been perverted by devils, tearing it up, and working it up. Sure it is. It's perverted creation. God will cast it away and start over again. That's right. What did it come from? One person believing one little, disbelieving one little phase of God's Word. The whole earth is groaning. The Bible says that even nature itself is groaning for that day of relief. Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. The trees are striving in vain. The flowers are trying to brighten the way for them, but they're groaning and crying. They know there's something wrong. Perverted. The womb can't bring forth that perfect because she's perverted. The ground stinks. She's bathed with innocent blood. She's got, she's like a, I could say something might be too flat. It's, it's, it stinks. God said it stinks before him. So filthy. Walk into a restroom. The urinals and just stink contaminated. <coughs> That's exactly what the world smells to like God. Smelling to it. Filth. The whole thing is filthy. God will burst her to pieces. And I'll create a new heavens and earth, he said. Yes, sir. What is it? Her womb hasn't brought forth a millennium. She's brought forth a perverted thing. Why? Trying to be wisdom. Got nothing against Florida. I don't mean this for you people from Florida. But when I crossed and went to Florida the first time and come back to the Georgia line, there, I stood right there and I said, as an American citizen, I give my part of it back to the Seminoles where it belongs. Why, they take better care of their yards than I do my hair. Everything feather-edged. The palm trees have got lights all over it. Big swanky yachts and things. Trying to bring a millennium without repentance. To me, it's a bunch of nothing. A million times more, I'd rather climb in British Columbia to the top of a hill and look across the mountains that God created and man's hands never touched it. Amen. Oh, amen. Certainly. Going to these cities, the big homes, that, that don't attract me. I hate that kind of stuff. But I know that one day, one day, oh, it'll be changed. 
Hallelujah. She'll cast forth her afflicted child. The earth. It'll be changed one day. Okay. Faith believes that it is written and says the word has no flaws. Did you ever hear ministers say, well, I tell you, the, the King James Version or the, this Revised Version or this year, it's just, a, it's just a little different. It really it didn't really mean that. Have you heard that? Oh, my. The world's contaminated with it. See? But faith don't believe that. Faith believes a God that can make me can keep that book in order for me to live by. If the God who made me is going to judge me, can't keep his book in order, then he's a very poor God. I believe every word of it's the truth. Yes, sir. What does this do to believe that? It gives faith a perfect resting place in it. See? You cannot disbelieve that that word's messed with in any way. You've got to believe it just the way it is. If you try to use wisdom to say, now look here, it's not reasonable that God said it would do a thing like this, but God did do it. That's right. Now, if you say, well, now, if a God did this, if he uh, took a man's life because he wasn't a Levite and put his hand on the ark when he's about to fall, no matter how much it was, he took his life for it, God said this Levite's alone to touch that. He took it. That's what God David stirred up, you know. A Levite, well, nothing but a Levite was supposed to touch that ark. And here the ark was coming right back for a revival. And one outside of that tried to handle the word. That goes to show that only the anointed of God is to touch that word. Amen. These creeds and denominations got no business tampering with it. Amen. Just the Holy Spirit's got a right to that word. And it's death for any other to touch it. Or to disbelieve any of it or teach it, the same will be taking this part out of the book of life. Amen. Don't put your hands on it. Stay away from it. Listen. Believe. Just what it says. Don't take nobody else's word. Take what it says. Stay right with the word. Amen. It's death to do anything else to it. Now, cause it. what does faith do? It believes it just the way it is. That's the way God has preserved it down through the age. And here it is. It's a word of God for me. God honors that. It gives a perfect faith in its trueness. How could you ever marry a woman? If that young girl had, had, had run out and done everything and lived in the prostitution and everything else and, and yet you went and got her in a house of prostitution come out and she, was, she said, well, I'll, I'll try to be a, a better girl. You can't have faith in that woman. See? You can't do it. How can a woman have faith in a man that did the same thing? You just can't build your faith there. There's nothing to build on. See? You can't do it. How could you go out here and say, here's the boat that's got a lot of holes in it and I put some grass sacks in it. Perhaps maybe it'll, it'll stem the tide across the river and I wouldn't want to take a chance on it. When there's one sitting here that's built right. <laughs> sure. Why would we take some man-made theology with holes all in it to prove that it's wrong? See? When well, here's one sitting here that's really the Word of God who stemmed the tide to every hard storm and Amen. gale. She's held just as true as she could be. Hallelujah. And always will. Amen. All right. Heavens and earth will pass away, said Jesus, but my word shall not. Why? They're eternal. They was in the beginning. He just come here to express God's word. He was God's expression. God was expressing himself through his son. These all started in Genesis, the seed chapter, and has been ever since. Well, ever since been on the scene, it's been the same thing. A fight between wisdom and faith. Always fight. So wisdom is of the devil and for his children. Did you ever notice? All of you seen sheep. All of you seen goats. But you know, the blade of them two is so close, it takes a real shepherd to tell the difference. You put an old goat out there and let him blade. Blade. And then you go over here and put a sheep there and let him blade. Listen at it. They're saying it's a lie. But a real shepherd can catch that voice. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. Amen. They can tell where's a goat. <laughs> well, he's a sheep himself. Yeah, he, my sheep know my voice. Strangers, they won't follow. What is his voice? Here it is, the word. Yeah. My yeah. sheep know my voice. See, they won't let anybody say, Well, now here, I'm talking the voice of God too. This says this there. But it's, see, Satan, we'll get to that in just a little bit. Cool that off for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> now, now you see that the seed word cannot grow in the atmosphere then of knowledge. Is that right? See, as soon as knowledge mixes with faith, it dies right there. Eve come and said, The Lord God said, The day we eat thereof, that day we die. Then she stopped to see what he had said. He said, But listen, my dear, you lovely little thing, see. Surely God made you for a purpose. You know, that's right. See, you're a woman. You were made for this purpose. That's what it is. You don't know it now. But you were made for this purpose. Oh, you're a lovely little thing, dear. Oh, look at those dainty little hands, see. Why, well, sure, you would. Surely. But he said, if we, if we did, we'd die. He said, but, oh, do you think that a good, loving father, God would do a thing like that? What she do? She listened to reason, took his wisdom, said, it's a tree of delight. One can be desired of it. And she fell for it. She said, exactly. And when she did, what happened? Like it would to any woman. As soon as you fall for it, it finishes right there. That's right. Now, you see, the seed that she was holding and would have finally become a mother by the will of God through a spoken word, she would have finally become a mother, but she couldn't wait, went into that. Now, see, then as soon as she did that, accepted wisdom with the word, and wisdom was contrary to the word, do you understand? Say amen. amen. See, if wisdom is with the Word and proves to be at the Word and the Word produces itself by the same thing, then it is the Word. But if wisdom is against the Word and not with the Word but trying to find something to add to it or take from it, it's of the devil. Right. And Holy Ghost seeds of the Bible cannot grow in the atmosphere of wisdom. That kills every seminary in the country. <laughs> that knocks the holes right out to them, punctures them, and a, a judgment flows in. <laughs> That's right. It should, certainly does. See? Because the Word cannot grow with wisdom. Worldly wisdom. Won't do it. Eve was to believe the Word as it was given to her. Is that right? Amen. She wasn't to listen to anybody else say anything about it. Just the way it was given to her. Amen. That's the way she's supposed to believe it. Amen. There'd never been a death if she'd believe that. That's right. And a man or a woman that'll take God's Word just the way it's given to us, hold it the way God said it, it's life. But to mix it with some wisdom of some organization, you die right there. Amen. Just like it did in the first place. That's the seed. That's the, way it, that's the way it acted the first time. That's the way it'll act every time. It always has. God permit, we'll prove that through the Bible this morning. Amen. That's the only way it can grow is to separate itself from all reasonings or anything else and just believe the Word. Amen. Eve was supposed to take it just the way God gave it to us. And I've expressed and told you that I believe God has preserved and kept this Bible. Amen. And that's the way God gave it to me here. Amen. I don't want no other wisdom. I want just the way God said it here. Amen. 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 Now, I hope I don't hurt you. But if the Bible said that I must repent, it means repent. Not do penance, but repent. The Bible said me be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't mean something else. It didn't mean Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It said that. We well, say Matthew 28, 19 said, Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's exactly what it was. Now, if that isn't right, if they haven't got the right thing, then the faith that Peter had to baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and all the rest of the Bible, then they had a, a false revelation that God blessed that brings him right back where he should have blessed Eve in the beginning. Amen. The name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's three titles. It's only one name. You cannot be baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost until you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because that is the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Yeah, and the whole Bible is wrote out like that. Every person in the Bible is ever baptized is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Nobody in the Scripture ever baptized in the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And everyone was baptized in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Everyone was baptized. The titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost is baptized in no name at all. Amen. Yeah, the title. 
Like minister, reverend, doctor, whatever more. Father, son, human, wife. Titles. Said, don't make any difference. Then put your title on your check, not your name, and see where it goes. (laughs) Say, I signed this check in the name of the housewife. (laughs) That makes just as much sense as would you disbelieve God's Word when the revelation is laying right there before you. So what? Sure. All right. It's supposed to believe it the way God said it. And it does not contradict itself. If it does, you come show me. (laughs) Don't contradict itself. Not at all. Satan might contradict it to you, but he can't to the Word. So the Amen. Word won't stand that. No, sir. That's the aged old thing. It's been thought of, but it's never been proven yet. Let's follow these two sources, or what you might call atmospheres, and see what they create. Let's follow them for a few minutes. Atmosphere. Both of these sources will create an atmosphere. I want to ask you something. Did you ever go in a church? I, I say this reverently now. And with, just to make a point. God forbid. Did you ever go in a church where the pastor's real starchy? The congregation's the same way. <laughs> That's right. See? What is it? It's that atmosphere that brought it. Go into a place where the pastor says, Now, nah, wait a minute. There's no such a thing as that nonsense. I don't believe in such a thing as divine healing about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, you'll see everyone in them congregation. If, they ain't, if there's an eagle in there somewhere, you'll get out amongst that bunch of chickens. Amen. Yeah, sure will. He'll leave it. He sure will. He can't stand that. He's an eagle. He's a sky-built bird. Not a barnyard. Yes, sir. Now, here he is. And now we find out that those atmospheres, and you get in wherever the, those saints where faith is taught, Hallelujah. in a church, you'll find a church in that atmosphere. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, let, let me get this to you so you, if you can see it. Go, that's the reason people come among the saints where they're praying. Believers. Paul said he didn't find any in the city, only Timothy, that was like precious faith that he had, you know. Amen. The rest of them are all denominationalists. See? But when he got into that atmosphere, see, he, you find things going on that the atmosphere has created. You find people living by faith when you get into a place where it says, my, my the Bible's true. God heals. You walk around that congregation, you find, well, I was dying with cancer. I was healed. I was once blind. I, see? And the stranger's saying, Whew, my, what did you mean? Uh, what was the matter with you? I'll show you on my record. Come home with me. Come eat dinner with me and I'll show you something. I got a record. If my neighbors know that I was in this condition, I was paralyzed for years. I was praying for it. See, what is it? That, that word in that church, that group of believers, has created that atmosphere. Now, how is the word in its simplicity, but yet in its completeness, ever going to grow in a place where knowledge overshadows that and says it can't be so? See, it can't. So where knowledge is preached from a seminary, the children die. Where faith is preached from the Word, the children live. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. Just life and death. The same thing happened in the Garden of Eden. That's exactly what happened to them two atmospheres there. When Eve got off the right one, on the wrong one, she died. It'll do it every time. So they cannot stay. If your church has got that kind of atmosphere, old child, if you want to live... You believe the word. Amen. Now, here's going to be a little stinger now. And I don't mean it in no harsh way. I just This is teaching. You have to, when you hit these places, you have to sting and burn a little, you see. I wait, just like branding a calf. I used to hate to do that, to brand a calf. Poor little fella. We'd run out there and I don't know where you have a calf roped or not. And, 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 and time, and hog time, see, across the... And a poor little guy, you run down there and take this hot brand and arm socket on him. Oh, brother. It looked horrible. When he got up, he really had a running spell. He'd just run and kick and holler and beller and go on. But I tell you, they know from then on who he belonged to. Amen. That's right. They know what, what path he belonged to. There's no joke about it then. So that's brand. Amen. Amen. That's brand. Yes, sir. When they said 
No, uh, you, many of you have read the, or, or sang the Cowboy's Meditation, you see. And the stray yearling, when they get him in on the last there at the roundup, the stray yearling, they just make soup out of him. Because he ain't no brand on him at all. <laughs> so the rest of them goes on to their own pastures. But the boss of the roundup mows his cattle. So if you brand hurts. Now look, Satan could scientifically prove by his wisdom. Now I'm going to play the part of a doctor here for a few minutes. Satan could scientifically prove by his wisdom that the soil that he was going to give for the human race to grow in had vitamins. Sure did. He could scientifically prove it. They can scientifically prove anything they want to almost. See? Sure. It had uh, vitamin P. Pleasure. Popularity. <laughs> That's in it. That's in his wisdom soil. Sure. There are all the worldly pleasure, all the picture shows, all the dances, all... I think, go ahead, that's all right, it won't hurt nothing. Sure. See? Popularity, well, the biggest church there is in the city. All right? It had vitamin C in it, which he referred to as common sense. Makes reason, see? Huh? It had vitamin R in it, which meant reasonings. Yeah, he could reason. But you see, that won't work. It had... Vitamin B, B in it, which means beauty. Satan is beautiful. Sin's beautiful. And as sin begins to get more and more, more beautiful it becomes. How much better house we got today in the log house? How much more prettier is it? How much prettier is our women today than they used to be? See? How much prettier is Florida it was now in the way God created? <laughs> See, it's got beauty. How many knows that Satan is a beauty and he desired beauty and tried to create a beauty, more beautiful kingdom and so forth? Sure. We know it. Satan is in beauty. Now, notice. He had vitamin R, which is reasoning. Vitamin B, which is beauty. Vitamin M, which is modern. <laughs> oh, you want to be modern. <laughs> Just take his knowledge and find out if you don't believe that stuff. Yeah. It'll grow right in you. That vitamin will come right up where you're sitting. Some fellow stand up giving you some of his knowledge. Now, look, friends, what would it be if we took this great, lovely cathedral here and had a lot of screaming and crying and speaking in tongues and running up and down the floor, frothing at the mouth like mad dogs? And, and what do you think the mayor of the city would say, Deacon Board, if we permitted such a stuff as that to come in here? Oh, sure, it's modern. You think our people stand down there on the street with a tambourine in their hand and... What would it do if our sisters would come with big long hair hanging down and the rest of the church women going through town? Look at there. Look at there while the press, this church, uh, everyone is, you know, well, look, look at there. She looks like an old model, don't she? Her spare tar is going flat on the back. You know, something like that. We want to be modern. See, that's the devil's wisdom. Amen. That's what it grows. Yes. That's the vitamin that's in the soil that comes out in the product that it produces. Go on, you modern Jezebel. All right. Modern. Like the women of today. Sure. Oh, modern. Well, the most modern people in the town will come to the church. Sure. It's got... Why? They grow in that modern vitamin. <laughs> reasoning vitamin. No, Aren't they growing that? See? That's what it is. Reasoning. But as soon as you start growing that, you're dead to the Word. You have to deny the Word before you can be that. The only way you can ever be a sinner is to deny God's Word. Yeah. What is sin? Unbelief. Unbelief in what? God's Word. Yeah. See? You have to deny the Word first. Now, well, i got about ten more vitamins wrote down here, but here's one vitamin that he failed to tell him. He had vitamin D in there. That's the biggest vitamin in there. Results, death. It's a pretty bunch of dressed people. Most modern there is, most beautiful church, biggest organization, see? Most modern there was, most beautiful there was, the most reasonable things can be said. Why wouldn't, if God made us a creature of His, why would He condemn these women from looking their best to have short hair? Why would He condemn a little makeup? Well, He had one in the Bible that did it, and He fed her to the dogs, so you just think about that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Why would, why would God, my, my, he don't expect us to live at that Bible. He sure did. He told Eve she must live. He told, Jesus said that man lives by the every word, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Who said that? Jesus. Is that right? 
He said, if any other man said anything different, let him be a liar. His word be true. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall not. There you are. So vitamin D lays in his formula. Modern. That's right. Now, but the word seed of the Bible can't grow in such ground as that. How could a person go into one of those modern churches now, the Spirit of God come up on them? And they, uh, they want to holler, Glory to God! Hallelujah! You know what? Well, you make the preacher swallow his sermon. Well, I'm telling you, I, I, it just seems that <clears throat> and all them cranes there stretch that neck around, look around to see, well, what said that? And then a few minutes the preacher would say, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Glory to God, that's right. <clears throat> Deacons, <laughs> you're, you're at the door in a few minutes. They'll throw you right out. See, the word can't grow there. Just can't do it. No, just can't do it. See? Just simply can't. See? And then you kind of spray this poison on top of it to try to kill the germ life in you. Now, we is a group of people in the land today that believes that God heals. Well, of course, we know reasonable sense shows that God gave us doctors to heal. Now, you ask a good sensible doctor if he's a healer. <laughs> He'll tell you, no, sir. I can move a tooth, but I can't heal a socket it comes out of. That's right. I can set an arm, but I can't heal it. <laughs> Certainly right. God is a healer. Yeah. Now, how is something ever going to grow in such stuff as that? Uh, How can the seed word ever grow in such a that This won't do. It can't grow in that kind of an atmosphere. It just certainly don't. But faith only grows in one vitamin. Uh, it only has one vitamin. don't have to have any mixture at all. Faith grows in one vitamin. That's the Word. Amen. That's the only thing that faith can grow in is the Word. And the only way that it can grow is because it believes the Word. And it has to take all the Word and believe its truth. And faith, vitamin, is spelt in a little four-letter word, L-I-F-E. Life. It has vitamin L. Faith has. Faith has vitamin L. Wisdom has vitamin P, vitamin R, pleasure, vitamin reason, vitamin all these other vitamins. Faith, uh, re, uh, knowledge has all that. See, wisdom. Has all that reasons and out. But faith only has one thing. Life. That's all it will stay. Thy word is life. Thy word is truth. He is the word, the way, the truth, the life. Faith only hangs right there. That's all. It won't take it. Holy Spirit life. Eternal life. That's where faith grows in. Word Zoe, God's own life. That's the only place that faith can work. Is when the faith hears the word and believes that it's God's word, then in that Zoe it grows and produces what the word said. God, how do you make the world? Do you believe the world was in God's thoughts? Sure. Or had to be. How did he make it? He just said, Where's he going to get the things? How could you ever reason with God? Say, God, well, where'd you get the material to, to make the rocks out of? Where'd you, they come from gases. Where'd you get the gas, Lord? <laughs> How'd you ever make water? What is the form of H2O? Where'd you get the hydrogen oxygen at? <laughs> That's it. See, it just doesn't make sense. What did God say? It was in His thoughts. And His thoughts is His Word before it's expressed. Amen. Then when His thoughts said, Let there be! And there was. There's what faith Hallelujah. By, the Hebrews 11 said, By faith, the world was created. The world was made by faith. God made the world out of things that does not appear. By faith, God spoke the world into existence because it was a, it was a premeditated word. Amen. But as soon as He said it, it became life. Amen. Now you can say, I believe that, Brother Branham. In your heart you can believe it. Then express it. Amen. I believe it. Don't never change it at all. Stay right with it. Watch what will grow out of it. <laughs> It'll produce the Word. Because it's faith. See, wisdom takes you away. Faith brings you to it. See that? That 
cuts out every man-made creed, cuts out every school of learning of man-made theology, just knocks them cold. Amen. There are all their professor, D.D., Ph.D., L.L.Q.U.D., and all these fellows have to go to school and learn psychology and all these other things. There's only one thing he leaves out. How to present himself with psychology and what kind of clothes to wear and how he must say, ah, man, just so, and all. Oh, nonsense. Amen. Let the, be led by the Holy Spirit. Sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. Amen. Not the wisdom of the seminary, but the Spirit of God leads the sons and daughters of God. Amen. Certainly it's true. Amen. Now, let's out every creed, every school of learning, every man-made theology. No wonder they can't believe. <laughs> There's nothing in there for it to grow on. See? They got vitamin R, reasoning, <laughs> that we're supposed to cast away. <laughs> vitamin popularity. Vitamin pleasure, you just got to have a little fun. What kind of fun? Oh, get got a little drunk once in a while, and, you know, just have a little fun, it won't make any difference. <laughs> you know, little things like that. Just all that all that vitamin, see? And how is that kind of a vitamin ever going to grow a word that denies that vitamin? That's right. Right. Yeah. How you go do it? See, the word denies that. If you love the world or the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you, said the Bible. Right. Right. So how's a how's God's How's God's Word go to grow under vitamins like that? It takes a certain vitamin in the soil to produce the grain. It's got to be in the right kind of soil. Yeah. We'll get into it just a little bit. See? It's got to have the right kind of soil. It won't grow the grain. You take certain grounds, it won't grow this, and we'll grow something else. Sandy grounds and different vitamins, and certain forth grows certain things. But don't want it. You ain't got it, and it just won't grow it. That's all. Now, weeds will grow prettier anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Any kind of ground. Isn't that right? Amen. Whole denominational weeds just grow anywhere. But I'm telling you, brother, if you want to produce the fruits of life, she has to come out of the Word. That's right. That's right. Sure. All right. I hope I ain't taking you all too long this morning. See? Now, don't. See? All right. No wonder they can't believe they have nothing to live in. Jesus spoke of them in Matthew, the 13th chapter, and the first verse. Let's just turn over here and see what Jesus said about them, these things that we're talking of. Matthew, the 13th chapter, and in the first verse. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat down, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake unto them things, and spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow seed. And when he had sowed some seed, fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell on stony grounds, and when they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no depths of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and, came, and because they had no root, they withered away. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them out. Others fell in good ground and brought forth some, brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, sixty and thirtyfold. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Not wisdom, ears. <laughs> See? All right. Hearing. All right. Notice. <clears throat> he said, Some went forth. When the seed went forth, preached the word, some fell by the wayside. Just like water on a duck's back runs right off. Some fell upon rocky ground, stony. And it had just a little dust to blow it up there. And it sprung up, but it didn't have no roots, no place to put its roots. Now, I'm going to make illustrations here, and I hope I don't hurt no feelings. That was the Catholic Church. They said this built on a rock. I'll agree with them. I sure will agree with them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. No earth on it at all. No earth on it to grow from. Why? They couldn't produce a they couldn't produce a Bible vitamin because they don't even believe in it. They doctrine is dogmas. That's right. Roman dogma. No word in it at all. See? Fell upon rocks. That was a super wisdom. Oh brother, I'm telling you. They had it in a super way. They presented it in a way of psychology of great big buildings and fine dress. Looked like holy gods of priests and everything else. How many heard that? 
testimony of that little nun that just got out. You got it? Here, I want that played some Wednesday night at your church. Yeah. And every person here should have the testimony. One of them followed me for a long time. How they, I went down there in Mexico myself and seen them lion pits where them nuns' babies, when the priests had them with them babies where they burnt them lion pits and things like that. That's what made communism spring up in Mexico. They broke up that Tommy rot. That's what made communism spring up in our... Don't you never fear communism. God's using communism. I don't believe in it. It's of a devil, but God takes a devil and comes right back around like he did King Nebuchadnezzar and come over and got Israel. See? You watch this here. The Bible don't prove it. One of these days we'll go into it. God raised it right up to avenge the children of God on that old whore. That's exactly what the Bible says. And they said they'd burn her with fire and she'd come to the end of her doom. That's exactly what's going to happen to her too. There she is. That's the one that fell up on rocks. Just so little of sorrel to the thing couldn't grow. It died. Then, that was super wisdom. Then some fell on the Protestants' ground. But after a while, the great wisdom of the big denominations choked it out. Choked the spirit out. Days of miracles had passed. Dr. So-and-so said so-and-so. See? No such a thing. Just perfect. Choked all, choked all the what out? Choked out the spirit for the wisdom. See? The Holy Spirit fell in the days of Martin Luther. The Holy Spirit fell in the days of John Wesley. The Holy Spirit fell in the days of the early Pentecostal church. But what's the denominations done? With their wisdom, have choked it out. Amen. Choked out what? The seed. What is the seed? The Word. Amen. It doesn't mean that. It means this there. See, they get it out. Many honest-hearted men of those ministers, I've met them, sit down and talk to them. Even on the subject of baptism and many things, I've asked anybody to come to discuss it. They said, Brother Branham, if we do that, our church would put us out. I said, well, who's more to you? The Word of God or your church? You'll never go no farther, and that's dust of denomination. See? Amen. All right, if it denies the Word, it's wrong. See, it shows it's man-made wisdom. Now, the Protestants got choked out. It choked the Spirit right out of them when they began to take wisdom instead of faith in the Word. The wisdom in the organization, the organizational wisdom, instead of faith in the Word. All that understand that say amen. amen. See? Faith in what the what the group of men of the Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Evangelicals, and all got together, and soon they're to form up a confederation of church, which will be the image to the beast. And he will have the same power in this nation, Revelation thirteen eleven, that they had over there and will cause a persecution upon the saints just like they did at the beginning of the, of the Roman church. See? That's where it's heading right up now. And that's why the Word's being sold right now everywhere. Stay away from it! Amen. Get out of it. See? Now, wisdom choked it out. Their own wisdom strangled the Holy Spirit away from them. Let me prove it to you in the Bible in Revelations, the third chapter, when we just got through the church ages. Jesus had been strangled from His church and was on the outside trying to knock on the door Amen. and get back in. Amen. Amen. That's exactly what it said. I stand at the door and knock. If any man will thirst, if you just let me in. I'll come. But nobody opened the door. See? They put him out. What was it? They had the, the seed fell on them. See? See? But some fell in the valley of persecution. Some seed went over into the valley of persecution. Now, in the valley is where you find the water, Amen. the best soil. When you take somebody who's been beat down, so he's got all the theology beat out of him, <laughs> laughed out of him, made fun of him, where he's been through the mills and ground it all out of him till the metal's been ready to work, you'll find out there's some moisture around there. <laughs> That's right. Into the valley. That fellow's been pitched over into the valley, kicked out of his organization, is down in the dumps, they call it. See? Not the dumps, but the valley. We're talking. Down in the valley. You know, that's where the lily girls, too, you know. Amen. <laughs> that's right. In the valley. All right. Some fell in the valley of persecutions, hard trial. Some of them seed fell in that. Valley of persecutions, hard trials. Be called everything like the lily was called, Beelzebub, made fun of. But in this valley is the rivers of water. Psalms 1 said, Blessed is the man. Let me just read it. Let me show what's in this valley. What Psalms? I thought it wouldn't have time, but we just take time. Amen. See, to read it, see? To have this here. We're going to read this and see what this man is down here. That's just where he's planted. If he's planted on the, upon a 
dusty desert rock where there's no ground at all, or is he planted in the valley? All right. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel, the wisdom. Amen. 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 <laughs> walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, standeth in the way of sinners, sitteth in the seat with the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, the Word. And in the law, word, does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Rivers. What is that? The nine spiritual gifts. Rivers of one water, one spirit. One water, but coming from nine different resources. Rivers of water. See? Rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit, fruit of the Spirit, in his season, his leaves all show shall not wither, and whatsoever he does, it shall prosper. Amen. See, some fell down in that valley there, where these rivers are. And brought, as you notice, I want to get something else. What was it done? It fell down in the river. It wasn't set out. But he shall be like a tree that's set out, transposed from this to that. He was planted. What? Predestinated. Amen. The thought of God before the foundation world placed him there. Amen. Not stuck out. Amen. Not by chance. But was planted, predestinated. Amen. What? To the rivers of water. <laughs> oh, his roots shall not wither. <laughs> Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord. Though he dies, I'll raise him up again at the last yeah. day. Yeah. That's right. He's predestinated to be there. Not just by chance. He was predestinated to catch that word when it was sowed. Yeah, and he'll be right there, and when he sticks, she's there. He's planted. Not just stuck down, he's actually planted. That's right. A lot different sticking a stick in the ground than planting something. It's different. Amen. The seed was planted. It found its own root holes. When the water began to come in and break forth its life, the Spirit, it began to say, you say, there are nine spiritual gifts. It said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus saying yesterday and forever, Amen. Hallelujah. He still heals just like He always did. Amen. 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 <laughs> he, he's planted Amen. by the Lord. river. Rivers coming from every right. side. Rivers of water. No wonder he can't wither. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> He's planted. Some of them seed fell over there. He can't die. It's right in the stream of life. It keeps producing. That's right. He's drawing his life out of rivers. <laughs> rivers. The New Testament. The Old Testament. Amen. Just being fed right on through. Oh, brother. Are you going to love him? Amen. 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 Are you going to praise Him? Amen. Are you going to worship Him? Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I love that, don't you? Amen. Yes. Brings forth His brings forth of His fruits in His season. Genesis one eleven. Bring forth His fruits. What fruits? The fruits of what? His fruits. Amen. What fruits? His own fruits. Yeah. What fruit is it? The Bible. Yeah. All of it's here. The fruit, love, it's here in the Bible. Joy, here in the Bible. Power, Holy Ghost, all these things here. Divine healing, promises of God, that's the fruits. Here it is. And if He's planted in this, this is planted in the, the right kind of soil in faith. What does faith do? Faith begins to grow it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he gets to move her up. See? That's it. Moves it up. Sure. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the waters. Brings forth his fruit in the season. Now, what kind of a fruit will it bring forth? John 14, 11. John 14, 11. He said, Jesus said, he, at least 14, 12. He, Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, Shall he do also? Why? The same words in him. 
He was the Word. Is that right? Yeah. And if you abide me and my words in you, that's what you will. Yes. I was talking to Brother Evans back there not long ago. He come up here. He drives so far. He lost his car. He said over there, Miller's left the key in it. Somebody come along and stole it. He had everything he had in it. He come up, he, him and Brother Fred and Brother Tom, some of them come up to the house and said, well, he looked like a little kid had his candy taken away from him. He just all whipped out. So he said, I just don't know what I'm going to do. I said, well, what is it? Now, they're coming. What's the first thing? To the Word. Ask the Father, if you abide me in my Word, you ask what you will. But stay with the Word. Just stay right with the Word. I said, let's pray. We got out on the floor. God started praying. While we were praying, I said, Father, I come to thee in the name of the Lord Jesus. Here is a brother that spends, works a, just a few days a week, his hands all beat up and fixing old wrecked cars and things like that to get enough money to drive 14 to 1,500 miles every Sunday to come into the meetings. Got a bunch of children to feed. It cost him about a, around 50 or $75 a week to make that trip just to come to church. See? Right. He come up here trying to hear the Word as we're trying to endeavor to contend for it. And I said, now some evil person has stole his car. And what was it? I said, now, Lord, I pray thee, give him back his car. In the name of Jesus Christ. What did I do? I placed that word, that promise, before God, sealed it with the name of Jesus, and sent forth the word. Right down the road it went. Way out there, it found the place where it started, like a hound on a rabbit's trail. See? Here he comes, right down the road howling. Got down there just about halfway to Bowling Green, Kentucky. What broke forth? The Word found him. Just then a vision flew back. I seen a man, yellow-looking shirt on, driving a young fellow, once been a Christian. The Word struck him. You're doing wrong. The Word caught him. He sent forth his Word, see? see? And it caught him. You're going to get caught in this someday. And the law is going to get you for doing this. Turn around and take it back. The Word got him. <laughs> he had once been a Christian. I seen him ring up here and stand on the side of the street. I said, now, brother, just take right out a certain way here and you'll find your car. Wait here a while, Lord, till he gets it back. Now, you had a full tank of gas in him. Yes, he said. I said, there won't be anything bothered, but there'd be half of that gas in him because it'd take half of it and run. He's about halfway to Bowling Green. By, by about 100 miles of it run out. When he found it, that's the way it was sitting, right? Exactly. There. What was it? The Word! Yeah, my. Went and got him. Come back and said, not long after that, some man bought a car from him. You were slipped off and didn't pay it. I said, Brother Branham, I thought, poor man, owed him $400. I said, I prayed. I sent the word. The word went, got on his track, found him. When he went out to find the man, he's never a Christian. See, he, did, he, did, he laughed. They asked him to go to church one time. He said, well, while preacher's preaching, I look for pretty blondes. So, you see, you can't find, yeah, that's, that's, that's devil. That's See? So the word couldn't hold on to him. What did the word do? It kept him in the eye. See, just don't. Brother Welch just kept holding on. Said it'll be all right. It'll be all right. The word went after him. See, if you abide me in my word, and you ask what you will. See? The word got after him. First thing you know, one of his boys is driving along down here on the road, and there it was. He seen the man in a car. Got his number. Turned up, turned into Brother Woods. They called to find out where it was. He was in Bowling Green. God in heaven knows. Never heard one word about it. Know nothing about it. Last Sunday, as we go afternoon, when we got through preaching here, went up there and changed my clothes and got ready to go to Florida for the or down for the well for the meeting that following night. When I got in the car, I seen that man. I said, "Brother Wells, I couldn't tell him now. He's got to make the move himself. See, just like me, he had to make a decision there. See, I said we're going through Bowling Green. He said that's about thirty miles out of the way." Went on down the road, I thought, oh, he, he, he'll, he'll get it. See, he'll get it. He, he just got to get it. Went on down, Sister Evans and I. After a while, he said, you know, Brother Branham, he said, have I been so thick-headed? <laughs> said, you said Bowling Green a while ago. Yeah. He said, um, you know that man that got my money? Run off with it? Yes. said, he's in Bowling Green. I've been thinking about this. i got a thing here. I'm going to turn it over find him where he's at. And I'm going to turn I said, So what would you do? Would you go on down there and get your money? Now, see, if I tell him, and he's got, see, he's got something to do himself. See, 
He's got something to do. I couldn't tell him. But it would break the vision right there, see. So I had to let, See, just like, why did Jesus stand there instead of Mary and Martha? Take ye away the stone. Well, he was God. He could said, stone be no more. And it wouldn't have been there. But she had something to do. Why did he stand there and look up on the harvest? You believe he was the Lord of the harvest? He said to his disciples, you pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send labors into his harvest. In other words, you ask me to do what I'm going to do. <laughs> See, we're buddies. We're, we're, it's a church. We've got something to do ourselves. You've got something to do. Here's the gospel. I know it. But if you just sit here and don't preach it, what good's it going to do? So you've got something to do. You've got to make an effort. You, got to, you say, well, I believe God can heal, but I just don't know. Stand up and let that word become your word. Amen. Believe it. Don't reason it. Just believe it. I said, well, <laughs> I know if he didn't go, he's going to lose it. I said... If it was me, if it was me, i go get my money right now. And he did. <laughs> when he got the man up out of the bed, he had some money. He called over to the neighbor, got dressed up, and paid it off. What is it? It's the Word. Amen. See, if it can find a place, it can turn. Now, same thing on divine healing. Now, what Brother Welch said, well, don't think I'll go down. Just think I'll go the other way. Well, that fellow said, well, I ain't going out there with that car. You see, it won't happen. But you've got to believe. Yes. You've got to believe it. And that's, then that falls into an atmosphere of faith, and it's got to produce it. It's just got to. Oh, that's... Did you ever think about when someone was raised from the dead, what happens? Did you ever think it's Finland there that time that little boy was raised from the dead? His spirit was gone from him. Now, the Word has to go out through endless space under and pick up that little soul and bring it right back. Amen. Yes. How can it do it? It's the Word. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Amen. See? How's it going to do it? It has to come by a watered Word. Amen. He'd showed the vision and it has to happen. There laid the boy. There was everything laying there just the way he said it. Two years before, and there it laid. That's what you have to say about the bear coming down the hill, whatever it was. It's got to happen. Amen. It's got to be so. See? Amen. What do you do? A word. I said, Heavenly Father, in the homelands, you said to me about two years ago that this little boy would raise from the dead. Therefore, upon the basis of your word, your promise, the first the word said, these signs shall follow them and bleed. He sent your disciples forward. You and told him to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Then by a vision, you showed me in the homeland that this little boy was going to return back to life again. Therefore, death, you can't hold him any longer. Amen. I got the word of the Lord. Not me, I ain't the word. He's the word. See, if I was the word, there's only one person could be the word. That was Jesus. Amen. He was God's spoken word by a virgin Amen. birth. I'm a perversion. See, I'm, I'm the results of a union between my father and mother. This has to die. That's me. See, the body, it has to die. It wasn't so with Jesus. He was the Word. Amen. He was born virgin. Brother, there's no woman, man, or nothing else that had nothing to do with Him. Amen. The woman was an incubator. That's right. She, he nursed her breast and so forth. That might have been true about that. But let me tell you, He was God. That's who He was. There wasn't no sex about it at all. He had to be free from sex to bring forth uh, life through that blood, as we'll get to in a few minutes. Man, look, He was the Word. But the word of the Lord, the prophets wasn't the word, but the word of the Lord came to the prophets. Yeah. Not they wasn't the word, the word came to them. That's what it does us today. When the word came for that little boy, what was it? A vision. What was for the bear? What was for these other things? All a vision. It's the word of the Lord came to it. Then what does it do? It holds there. Now it's got to be spoke first. Death! Give him back! In the name of Jesus Christ, I send forth that word. Catches, just like it caught that boy going down the yard to Bowling Green with that stolen car. Here it goes over here and catches again. What does it do? It catches that, uh, that little spirit, brings it right back here and presents it in the body just as the word said it would do. There it is. What does it? Faith! Not knowledge. Just say, now let's see. The air is made out of so-and-so. There's so much acid. There's so much gas. There's so much uh, cosmic light. I can figure that out. And maybe if I could... Oh, you're, you're, you're fooling away time. Not wisdom. Faith. Not wisdom will tell you that can't be done. Faith proves it's done. 
Amen. Amen. That's right. Shows he's the same yesterday and forever. All right. Let's hurry now. We've got to hurry. Brings forth fruits of his kind. John 14 says that he that doeth my, uh, he that believeth on me, the works, the signs that I do. Now, you say, is that the signs he does? He went into a house where a little girl, the only daughter of a minister, was laying dead, cold, pale, laid out. She'd probably been dead a couple hours before he got there. They had her laying on a little couch, fixed to take her and bomb her. Jesus walks right into the room where she was like that. There's lamenting and crying like that. He put them all out. Said, Get out of here. Get out. He said, Come here, Peter, James, and John. I know you believe. He said to the father, You believe you wouldn't come after me. And the mother said, Lord, I believe. He said, Stand here. He looked out there, still with a little girl. He said, Tabitha. That is me. Yeah. Hallelujah. He didn't have to pray. He was the Word. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to pray if I can see the vision. Because the Word's already made ready. I have to pray to get the Word. Get what God says. Then I can speak it after I get what He says. But He was the Word. Amen. Amen. Made I say unto thee, arise. Picked her up with a hand. Aye, my. That's it. See? Oh, my. That's manifestation. Brings forth of its kind. Jesus said, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. So these, see, all these things of these denominations and things, God sets things in such a conglomeration of muck and sin, just like the womb of the earth has got the creation. That's right. Uh, oh, man. How can it happen? How can the true Word of God grow on these bobbed-haired, sharp-wearing, cigarette-smoking, bowling alley hangers, church joiners? How can it do when such pleasure-loving, seeking crowds as that hang out and love such things as that and loving of the world? How can the love of God come in? How can the seed of God grow in such a ground as that? Amen. It'll Amen. never take root. It'll never bring any life to it. It'll lay there on them old dusty denominational rocks and rot away, but it'll never bring life. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Pleasure seekers, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Terrible. Yet they're smart. They're twice as smart as the, as the other class. Sure. Smart, educated, wisdom seekers. Just like Eve was. And they got the same dose she got. This is exactly. It's the truth. How could a lily live, a lily seed live and grow when it thrives on waters grow in one of those dusty denominations? How could it do it? When it thrives on water, water's the Spirit. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power of the Spirit. See? Though the Word falls on them, it can't grow. It can't grow just like the Word was on Eve, but it couldn't grow. Why? She accepted wisdom. Satan's wisdom. The Word comes to them, the Word falls up on them. Sure it does. Yes, sir. It grows. It will fall on them. They can hear the Word preached. Did you ever see people sit in the church they never will make a move? Preach to women about bobbed hair. Year after year past, still got bobbed hair. Talk to a man about smoking, women about drinking. They drink right on this the same. They're like pour water on a duck's back. They ain't got no place to grow. See? It's that old pleasure-seeking popularity. Well, let the rest of the women do it first, and then I will. I don't care what they do. It's your duty to follow the Word of God. Amen. Right. See? Though the Word falls on them, it can't grow. It's Satan's wisdom. See? So it just becomes denominational dust. They can't believe in Hebrews 13, 8. All puffed up with the wisdom. Nothing for it to grow in. See? How can they believe th Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ, same yesterday and forever? Amen. Couldn't do it. See? Oh, they say they believe it. Oh, you tell them that. They say, sure we believe it. Then show me the fruits of it. Let me see it. Let me see it being done. Let me see the church that you're preaching to do what they did in the first apostolic church then. They believe the Word. You twist your baptisms. You twist your evidences. You make it fit some kind of a creed. Instead of taking the Word and let the Word bear its own fruit, you make some kind of a thing you got to do to bring an evidence of it. And Satan can interpret every evidence that you want to put forth. Sure he can he certainly can. But he can't produce the Word. That's one thing. It burns him up. He just can't do that. 
Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Now look at Cain and Abel. Both of them are sincere. Cain took by his wisdom after his mother church Eve. That was his mother. How many knows that Eve was the mother of Cain? Sure. All right. Like his mother, he took reasoning. See? Wisdom. His own wisdom. A beautiful sacrifice. He had the flowers. He had the fruit of the field. He said, well, I surely... See, he said, God is just like Satan said to, to Eve, surely, surely, surely God will receive my sacrifice. I built a lovely altar. I have it so pretty. It's so decorated. It's like this Easter will be. They'll spend millions of dollars across the nation and put Easter flowers on some altars. Yes, altar wasn't yeah. made for flowers. <laughs> for sacrifice. <laughs> see, it just shows that same old spirit of Cain. See, spirit of the old devil from Eden. See, why, what happened? Cain thought, surely, you know the man was sincere because it meant life or death to him. And then people don't think they're hypocrites. They're sincere. You say, then they could be sincere and be wrong. Sure. A man can take arsenic sincerely, thinking he's taking castor oil or something. Something else. See? It's sincere. That don't do it. It's truth. Not sincerity. Truth. Yeah, them women over there in Africa sacrifice their little babies to gods the alligators. Are you that sincere? No. How many of them stand the Chinese break their bones to kitchen gods? And how about the Mohammeds and up in there and the firewalkers that put things all hooks of flesh in their mouth and sew their mouth up? And some of them put a stick. I got a, a statue up there, a little figurine, uh, where he sacrifices to his God to thank he go to heaven. A priest puts a stick in his mouth, wraps it around his hair with a chain, comes down, puts his hands behind him, chains his feet. He can't drink, speak, eat, or nothing else till he dies. You see any Christians making a sacrifice like that? You won't even believe the truth, the Word. <laughs> now, beauty, he said, surely God will receive. Look how pretty my altar is. See that same spirit today of wisdom? Well, if we build this great denomination, surely God will receive us. He won't receive nothing but His Word. Oh. Well, he said, now look, Brother Branham, if we, if we put out so many ministers each year, our missionary program last year run uh, over $100,000, that may be ever so good, brother, but you're dead Amen. until you acknowledge that word and come to it. Amen. Exactly. Well, Brother Branham, our church, what do you think you are, just a little peanut brain down there? That's true. That's, that's exactly right. That's true. But whatever I am, let me stay with that word. It'll grow into something someday. Yeah. Yeah. Just stay with that word, no matter what it is. We ain't got nothing but this little tabernacle here. That's as much as we need right at this present time. Uh, it's a place to set because we're looking for Jesus to come. We don't want no great big denomination to have to spend millions every year on buildings and things like that and people trying to preach the word suffering out there with nothing to eat and things like that. What's the matter with the people? And oh, it looks like people could wake up, but anybody could accept Catholicism, could be blind enough to accept anything. I'll tell you the truth. Anybody would let that go down their neck. Could, could a wise man, no one of the Bible said, even the kings of the earth committed fornications with her. And the wise man, knowledge, see? And they make it, them priests, smart man, oh man. You talk about educated. Well, they have to have years after years after years after years. They say they don't live with those nuns. Then I want to ask you something. Why don't they become sterile then? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're the bride. And that, they're the nuns is the bride, and that's the bridegroom, of course. You see. That's right. Amen. Mother Superior smothers the babies and puts them in the lion pit. If you don't believe it, listen to a real one has been in there testify of it. Say, now, come on, let the law arrest me. And said, we'll do the same thing they did in Russia and the same thing done in Mexico. We'll bust that thing wide open when it gets into the government. But how are you going to do it now when we've got the head of it right there in the government? Yeah. That's, that word's got to be fulfilled. They organize an image over here to that beast that's set there, and they both commune together and give power to this beast to speak. Oh, brother, that word's going to stand right there. Not communism's going to take over, but Romanism is. Mm -hmm. Now, looking here at this, Cain said, Surely he will receive my sacrifice. But what kind? He said, I made a sacrifice. But what, what kind of a sacrifice was it? Botany life. Plants. Flowers, vegetables, botany life. What? There's no suffering to it. No penalty. Amen. People don't want to suffer. So what's the matter today? They come, they come right now and believe this word. If they didn't have to get out of their church. If they didn't have to be laughed at, made fun of. 
No, they want botany life, some kind of a wisdom. Well, this life is just as good as that. It's not. I'll show where that comes from just in a minute, Lord willing. But Abel, by faith, glory, came by wisdom, said, surely God will accept this. Here's an altar. I got a church. That's what a church is, an altar, a place of worship. All right, I got an altar. I will worship just as sincere as my brother. And I've got a beautiful something here for it. Surely God will receive it. That's the same thing the devil told his mother. Same lie. Wisdom. Now, Abel, Hebrews 11, said, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. He being yet dead, yet he spake. Abel by what? Wisdom? By theology? By faith offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith in what? By faith in what? By how work did he have his faith? There was just his father and mother, him and his half brother. How in the world could it be? Where could, it, where could he do it? What did he have faith in? Faith in botany? Faith in this? No, sir. He had faith in the Word. Amen. Because you want to know why he was out of that garden. Why were we put out? Mother would have to say, because I listened to a lie of the devil. Because this boy here was born in such and such a way. That's why God put us out. Well, he said, I can't even get around the gate. There's a cherub there with a sword. Garden that tree of life. So by faith, see, by wisdom, Cain offered, uh, you know, not knowing the word, but it's taught by wisdom. He made a nice place and made it pretty and beautiful. But Abel, no one told him now, just a boy, by faith, saw that it wasn't botany life. It was a sexual affair through blood. There you are, brother. Way over top of that one time. <laughs> by faith. His children still sees it. He never taught it with some wisdom. Now, it don't come by wisdom. It comes by faith. The Bible said, Abel by faith. What did he offer? Blood from living life. Animal life. We're animal ourselves. We're warm-blooded animal. It's exactly right. Higher species, the highest animal, but the soul in there. That's what's life. Now, notice, by faith, Abel saw the revelation, the vision, and brought a living, running blood because life is in the blood. Life is in the stem of the, uh, the flower. And it's body life which has no feeling. I was in hope that would soak you. <laughs> Abel... By faith, staying with the word, by faith, not by wisdom, by faith he seen that it was sex blood. The blood cell comes from the male. The man has the blood cell in the sperm. The hemoglobin is the blood comes through the male. And Adam knew that it wasn't apples and peaches and potatoes. Or whatever it was that brought him out of the Garden of Eden that caused the sin. It was sex blood and he offered blood back. Yes. By faith he done it, not by wisdom. How is a man through wisdom going to understand it when the whole Bible and the whole church of God is built upon divine revelation by faith? Upon this rock I'll build my church. Hmm? Huh. Oh, they say, sure, we believe that then where is the life of Christ in these forms? Where is the life of Christ? Second, you'll put some of these scriptures down. See, uh, where is the life? If they say, well, we believe, we believe, we believe. If you do, then Jesus said, these signs shall. Not they may be, they shall follow them that believe. Jesus said, if a man believes on me, the works that I do, he'll do them also. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, Shall he do also? Amen. He just won't play around. He'll do it. How can he help it? Because there's the very life that's in Christ is in you. 
It won't put forth any wisdom. It won't grow in it. It's got to deny the wisdom to take the, the faith. Faith in the Word, not wisdom in the Word. Faith in the Word. Satan's got more wisdom in that Word than any, all the preachers throw together, priests and everything. Got more wisdom, but he can't have faith. Faith will make it live. Faith will make him repent. Will make him get away from his organization. Amen. He's got wisdom, so he just stays with it. All right. But Abel, by faith, saw it was a sex act, and he offered blood, the life of blood, and God received it. Now, in 2 Timothy 2, 3, it said, the, the word comes to him now, it'll fall on bad ground, or see, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Power of the Spirit. 2 Timothy 3, if you're putting it down. All right. Having a form of godliness. The Holy Spirit signs of eternal life. They deny that. People ain't to speak with tongues. No. No such thing as divine healing. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. That stuff was for the apostles. Having a form. Paul said prophesying it in the last days. The last times these things that take place. Not in them days. And the Spirit speaks expressly in the last days. Latter days. Some shall depart from the faith and all these things. See, there it is. Having that form of God. Now, how can the Holy Spirit's signs of eternal life grow in that ecclesiastical dust where there's no spirit of water at all? See? Can't grow in the fields of denominational fun and wisdom and frolic. How can signs and wonders of the living God grow in a, a woman and having the common decency to act like a lady? I want to ask you that. How can it grow in a man that is standing in a pulpit and for a measly meal ticket or some denominational favor would bypass the truth of God? Amen. How can spiritual signs follow that? Can't do it. How can, how can it grow in a preacher that will take his denomination down and strip him down on the bank there here the other night in a certain place I just passed last night in a certain parish and having a big shindig dance in there carrying on? How can the fruits of the Spirit grow in such a place as that. It's on an ecclesiastical rock. That's right. And not in the valley of persecution to be laughed at and made fun of. The lily toils hard. You remember my sermon not long ago, a few years ago, on Mr. Lily. He toils where Jesus said, How tall and the spinning, yet I send you that Solomon all of his glory when they're not arrayed like one. How that lily draws to make itself pretty. What for? Just to be given out. The pass by smells of perfume. The bee flies right into his heart and takes the very honey right away from him. He just gives it freely. <laughs> Toes to do it! Hallelujah. That's a real man of God. Pastor Lily. Reverend Mr. Lily. Yes, sir. That toils at the word. Lays on his face and cries out to God. God, I can't see where this will meet. Here, here. It's got to come by the word. When you sit and God gives it to you, then go freely. Not to have some big campaign. If you guarantee me a, so many thousand dollars, I'll come. But freely, if it's ten buck, two, or wherever it is, Amen. God, where you want me to sow the seed, I'll give it freely. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus said, Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like him. He said, consider the lily. Poor little fellow had to suffer like everything to get what he'd get in life. That made fun of him. All the big ecclesiastical kicked him out and called him all kinds of dirty names. But he stays right at that word tarling day and night. He's in a valley. Well, he's, he's in a place where he can draw from the rivers of water. Tarling, what for? To give it out. Amen. Freely you receive, freely give. Yes, sir. Oh, my, how can it grow in that field of dust on that Ecclesiastical rock. Cain's children were wisdom, scientific. Watch Cain's children now as it comes up. Let's watch them a minute. Cain's children, what was they? Builders, inventors, great men of science. They had wisdom. See? They, they, they even built buildings and made iron, tempered stuff together. They were scientists, smart, educated, and religious. But what did that crop of wisdom produce? Death to the whole race. Amen. When the judgments of God fell. Is that right? Amen. What did, the, what did the group do? Produce death. Though in all their wisdom and smartness, what happened? They died. Every one of them perished in God's judgment. Is that true? Amen. God said so. They were smart. 
highly educated, polished, religious, very fine, smart, educated, dependent on their wisdom, and kill the whole race of people. The same thing they're doing right now. Amen. There are atomic bombs and things that this smart scientist and things will, will destroy the whole race. They got fallout right now. It's just, it'll just burn your eyes out, t- give you cancer, and everything. They turned enough of it loose in the ocean, you can't even find it no more. When it gets loose, it'll destroy the whole world, they say. People will burn up in their own flesh. No wonder the Bible said, in the fowls of the air, I'll eat up on the captain's flesh and so forth, rot from fallout and everything else. They're doing it themselves. They're smart wisdom. That's what caused death to come. Smart wisdom. Be simple. Believe God's Word and live. Amen. Take your wisdom and die. All right. The harvest, the end time, they perish. Well, Abel's children were humble. Farmers. Shepherds. Pastors, you know. Shepherds. Farmers. Humble. Didn't claim to be smart. But they just stayed with the Word. What did they produce at the end time? A prophet. It did. A prophet. What for? The last time signs. Amen. Noah stood in that door building on that ark. He said, it's coming rain. He was called a fanatic, but he was a prophet. Amen. Amen. What did he do? Brought salvation to them that believed. They don't want to escape. That's what the humble, uneducated race brought forth. They believed in faith. Others believed in knowledge. They brought forth death to the whole race. What did what did the humble do? With faith brought forth salvation. Amen. A prophet of the Lord who gave him a sign that the end time was there. Do you think the educated would believe it? Snarl their nose and walk away and say, where's the rain coming from? Scientifically proved to me where is any water up there. That's a sign that's a bunch of smart alecks. Trying to scientific proof there's no God. Trying... When that picture was taken, that took them right off their stool where they were sitting. <laughs> you couldn't understand, so there's some kind of a light that struck the lens. There's their own scientific instrument took the picture of it. <laughs> a camera. Like George Lacey said, he said, Sir, said, this camera won't take psychology. The light struck the lens. It was there. <laughs> so now what it is, I can't tell you, but it's there. So I'll write my name to it. He did. And you've got it yourself. Yes, sir. Amen. That's with the FBI. See? Our God in this last day is not leaving one stone unrolled, but what He's showing this world can't stand. Amen. Wisdom and knowledge growing on, shooting through the air like flies and jet planes and fighting under the water and all kinds of corruption and living in sin, trying to build something that will protect them. There's only one thing. But the righteousness of God stands in the door of the ark. Who is the door? Christ said, I am the door to the sheepfold. I read my text. My sheep will hear my voice. The stranger they'll not follow. You'll never twist one of those organizations out there. You'll come out of the shores of the world. I'll take them from the fold and I'll lead them. I'll go before them. Amen. They'll know it's me. No one can walk like me. No one can do the things that I do, he'd say. Amen. Amen. Rabbi, now we know thou comest from God, because no man could do these miracles that you do except God be with him. That's right. Nicodemus' confession. That's it. That humble little race produced a prophet. And that prophet in the last days of Abel's children produced a prophet that showed the last days signs and gave the warning. It's just about the same now, I think. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says. Amen. Amen. So see, the seed word of life can't grow in that kind of an atmosphere of wisdom. It just can't do it. Moses and Joshua had faith in the word. The others wanted to dance and strip the women. Korah, why? By his Egyptian wisdom. Moses didn't want that. Look at them Korahs today making it easy way. Dancing, all night parties. Women bobbed hair, short dresses, anything. Don't make any difference. That's all right. It isn't all right. The Word says it's not right. That's right. Same thing, see. Though every one of them was baptized, every one, Cor and all, was baptized. Shows it as that ecclesiastical type again. You say, were they baptized? 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 2. Let's just read it. I know it's getting late, but dinner won't scorch. Amen. Amen. 
This dinner might last a little longer if the Amen. Lord just keep feeding us. Amen. First Corinthians ten. Now look here. First Corinthians ten, one to two. I got now I got second Corinthians. First Corinthians ten, one to two. Moreover, brethren, I would not I would not that you should be ignorant how the our all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Korah had the same baptism that the rest of them did. But what do you want to do? Let the women just da- dance and they drink a little wine and have a little time, strip them off and have adultery and have that. You know the Bible said they did that. They took those women and stripped their clothes and made them dance and things like that. And Moses became angry with them. You remember the time? Why? They had Dr. Korah along. They had wisdom. He said, I'll take you back to Egypt. And that's where they went too. <laughs> But Brother Moses, when he come down, it was different. Him and Joshua stayed with that word. God gave a promise. They stayed with it. All right. Others wanted to dance and strip the clothes and from by Korah's wisdom. and was all baptized. Israel and Moab. Oh, I just, I, you, I've been through that once. We won't take that. i got to hurry. All right. Well, Israel and Moab. You know how it was. There, one, just as fine. One with wisdom. Great big denominations. The other, little interdenominations. Then one day, where's one I get to now before we close? One day, these two great sources or powers met for a showdown on the Word of God. Now we're going to come to the climax. We could go back. I could take a dozen. I could stand here for a week and never even touch the surface of it. How would I can prove that? Right there, what I'm talking about. But I hope you get it. See? One day, it come to a showdown. Wisdom and faith. Come to a showdown. Jesus and Satan met. Amen. That's right. Jesus and Satan met. These two great forces, wisdom and knowledge, came to a showdown. See? Now, both of them used the Word. Is that right? Oh, brother, this gets good to me. Don't miss it now. Oh, I say, God opened my heart. Both of them use the Word of God, the same Bible. <coughs> but it won't work in an unconverted channel. That's true. It, won't. it certainly won't. Both of them use the Word of God. But Satan used it from a head knowledge. See? A head knowledge. And it didn't work. I got a scripture here. You mind if I read it? No. Let's take. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Right quick, just a minute. I want to read this. It just looks so good to me right here. Hebrews 4. And uh, let's get Hebrews 4 and start 1 to 2. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us to enter into his rest, as of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with knowledge, wisdom, faith in them that, faith in them that what? Heard it. You have all the word, you can know that word from A to Z and it'll never work for you. Have you seen man take that word and try to make it work? Say, brother, glory to God, it just won't work. You can't fool the Word. No, no. No, no. No matter what you profess, the Word testifies of itself. No matter what you claim, the Word gives a testimony. That's right. Now, Satan knowed the Word. He knowed it from A to Z. Well, you know what? I imagine if he'd have a degree, he'd have enough titles to stretch across four or five pages of paper. Doctor, Reverend, Elder... <laughs> P H L L Q D all the alphabet in every way. His degree would be in that Bible. He knows every word of it. Sure he does. See? So Satan said, Now I know the word. I know that he knowed the word when he came to Eve. So he had it by head knowledge, but it wouldn't work. Jesus knowed it by faith. In the revelation of God's Word, 
in his own predestinated life. Amen. Don't worry, I hope that soaks plumb to the into your heart. Jesus knew who he was. Amen. Satan was wondering. <laughs> He knew that he was a predestinated creature of God. That God Himself was manifested in him. It wasn't Him doing the works. It was the Father that dwelt in him. Amen. Amen. Let the devil fly with all of his theology. Jesus, Satan knew it. He knew the Word. He could quote that Scripture, boy, it's like a walking Bible. He could just quote it like that, see? But Jesus just stood still. For He knew where He was standing. He knew that he was predestinated. Yeah, was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world? He knew he was that person. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, brother. Yeah. He that has an ear, let him hear. Yeah. He knew that he was predestinated for that, and that's the way he knew the Word. Yeah. See? And it worked. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Satan knew it by wisdom. It failed. He quoted the same word Jesus quoted. Same Bible. He quoted from Psalms. He'll give, it's written, Satan said. He'll give these angels charge concerning the lest any time the dash your foot against stone, he barely up. He said, and it's also written. Uh, <laughs> See? Satan knowed it by knowledge. Jesus knowed it by experience. He knowed it by revelation. He knowed that he was that Son of God that was to come into the world. He knew his standing. He knew he was born to this world for that purpose. And that's the reason the Word of God could work through him. Because he knew what he was. Amen. Glory. Amen. Have you caught it yet? <laughs> he knew what he was. Satan, at the back of it, he knew what he was. And he knew he had no business with his wisdom on the Word. Because the Word was God. Amen. You get it? Now... If Jesus knew who he was, he was a predestinated creature of time. You believe that? Amen. Jesus, the body. He knew that he was the predestinated word, the person of God that was to stand in that day to be the sacrifice for sin. And he knew his adversaries. I preached on a couple of Sundays ago. He knew his adversary. And he knew who he was. Therefore, those two great forces come together, knowledge and faith. Amen. Jesus knew who he was. Satan knew the Bible as good as Jesus did. But it wouldn't work for Satan. Amen. Amen. <laughs> no matter how much knowledge you have, it won't work. Now take that back to some of these big organizations. Wow. Think of it a minute. They say, well, we got the work. Let me see it work. You Catholics, you say you're the original. Let's see it. Show me your works without your, or show me your works by, or without your faith, and I'll show you mine by my faith. Amen. See? Amen. See what the Word said. Can you plant a seed without it manifesting what it is, if it's growing? Can you plant a grain of corn without making corn, if it grows? Amen. Can you plant a potato unless it raised potato? Can you plant a flower without being that kind of flower? Amen. Then if you're sowed in the seed of God in your heart, it's got to produce that. Amen. Jesus said, He shall! Do my works if he believes me. If he Amen. says he believes it and these don't follow him, he's a liar. Amen. He that believeth on me the works that I do, shall he do also. Even more than this, for I go to my Father. Amen. Boy, that's strong. If we just go hit a skidding place and slide off over onto some rock somewhere, we just fall down the valley so the winds can't blow it away and the fowls can't get it, it'll grow. Amen. Hide it down in your heart. David said, Thou law have I hid in my heart. Amen. So no denomination can take it out. <laughs> the birds can't pick it up. I got it hid here. I meditate in it day and night. They're written up on my bedpost. And everywhere I got them, I've got them bound on my fingers. They're in the, and Jesus said, Your name's in the palm of my hand. So how, how's it going to be forgotten? Can't be. Now. All right. Then if Jesus defeated Satan upon the faith, knowing who he was, he was a predestinated creature. Are you ready? Amen. What about the predestinated bride of Jesus Christ now? Do you believe the bride's predestinated? 
the predestinated bride of Christ now, the church, the word seed, with everything that God promised to put in the church in it right now, it's in it now. Everything's in order. The Holy Spirit's been given. The seed's been sowed. The evening lights has been shining. The sign of Sodom that Jesus promised to share. And Malachi 4. Amen. A predestinated church. Oh, devil. <laughs> church of the living God. Hear it on tape to you. Do you know where you stand? Do you know that you are called of God, that the Holy Ghost reigns in your heart and every word of God is real to you? Amen. Oh, brother, how is Satan going to stand against that? How is he going to stop that from growing? How is he going to keep them signs from falling? Why, you could throw them in jail. If you could, I don't care what you do, they done tried it. They rotted in the jails. They was fed the lions. They were sawed asunder. They were cut to pieces. You can't kill it. Right. A church that's predestinated. Those who He foreknew, like He did Jesus. He has called. Those who He called, He has justified. And those who He has justified, He has already glorified. Predestinated. And now in the last days with every seed sowed. Everything in order. The world in its order. The time shaped up. The church in its order. The seed, the evening lights. The signs of, like he said, as it was in the days of Sodom, an angel of God, the Holy Spirit coming down, moving, performing the signs that he did then. Malachi 4 promised he'd send in the last days what he promised. And we see all of that right here. Where? Amen. Where? Amen. 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 Right here in the last days, a predestinated church, knowing where they're standing, sowed with the seed, the Holy Spirit in the church. Satan, be careful. (laughs) What happened? Just a minute now. What happened? With everything that's promised to it, even the promises of Malachi 4, what did did Satan do when he met Jesus? He flew into him with all the ecclesiastical force he had. Um, I know the word also. Flew into him. That denominational dust that he had, we thought it out onto him, but didn't have any life. Did he ever fly off? <laughs> he come off a lot quicker than he flew on. Why? He hit that hundred billion volt wire there. <laughs> he singed his feathers. He come off of him. He come out of him because that wire had bolt in it. Remember, Satan had a wire too. But no matter how nice copper the wire is, if it hasn't got no life in it, it's dead. Amen. <laughs> she won't act. Amen. Same wire. One's got energized from the dynamo, and the other has no connection at all. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's the reason it'll work in a predestinated vessel. Amen. That's the reason the word will work. Amen. Where it's connected. Glory. Connected where? With the denomination? No, sir. That's Amen. a dead socket having a form of godliness. Amen. Denying the power, but connected with the word which never shall pass Amen. away and can produce the same power at every time. That's what's that. Glory. Amen. 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 Do you love him? Amen. Will you serve him? Amen. Sure. Amen. Not hooked into some organization, but hooked into the the, the, the dynamo here. Amen. Brother, I'm telling you, the work's there because it's hooked up. The same word. Moab was hooked in too, and Israel was also. Moab had nothing but a dead bunch of creeds and a false prophet. But Israel had a smitten rock, a brass serpent, a pillar of fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Signs of a living God. Exactly. It worked. Why? It was on faith. Yes, sir. Not on knowledge, some man creed, but on faith in the Word. The Word itself. Life comes from the Word. My Word is life. That current comes through the Word. Satan got off of there right quick. His theological dust didn't go very good right there. Satan's war had no current in it. It was dead creeds. 
It won't, it won't occur. Now, see, it's the same wire. Jesus used the Father's Word. Satan used the Father's Word. Satan was Satan. Jesus was God. That's the difference. Amen. That's the truth. One's a creed and the other's a word. One is true and the other is false. One will produce it, the other can't produce it. Do you get it? Same kind of wires. Uh, that's exactly right. Same wires. Hebrews 2, we just got, uh, Hebrews 4, 2, we just got it, see? Like denominational, like denominations say, by wisdom. See? Denominations by wisdom says this. The days of the current is past. Amen. Do you love Him? Amen. Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Do you believe Him? Amen. 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 I believe Him. Yes, sir. Amen, Amen means so be it. Lord, Amen. my Amen. prayers this morning, take every believer in here and pull him into the current. Amen. Oh, put life in him. Amen. Let him buzz and shine Amen. forth the glory Amen. of God. Glory. Yes, sir. Amen. Turn on the current. You know what I believe? The seed's been sowed. Would you believe that? Amen. For that great church, just like the wires has been laid through the building, every socket cha- been tested by the Word. Oh, my. Every outlet tested by the Word. Thinking how strange and fiery trials comes is to test you. There's a little short there, ground blow the whole switch. God don't want them in His church. There ain't going to be no switch blowing in this, no fuse blowing in this last days. No, sir, He comes back and wells are in there, right? Yes, sir. Are it ever lights hanging in its place? Only thing waiting for the master back there to turn on the switch. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. yes, sir. In the Word. Sure. You could be right now, brother. If you need healing, just touch the switch. That's all you have to do. If you've got a real war, if your, ground, if your line is grounded and connections to have been lost in Jesus, tell you what to do. Amen. That's right. Now, the denominational wisdom says the days of miracles is past. There's no current in the wires. But faith knows better. <laughs> they feel it. They see it work. They know it lights. They know what it does. Faith is the current, the current spirit, and wisdom is the denominational forms. Satan tried to tempt Jesus from faith in the Father's Word. Here's what he did. He tried to show him his great big ecclesiastical organizations of the earth. But he couldn't tempt him. Come over and join mine. I'll make you bishop over all of them. It's written, said Jesus. Yes, sir. Satan couldn't tempt him. No, sir. He's a past that. But Jesus was the Word. His faith in the knowledge of his self that he was the Word, just like Moses. Why, well, Moses knew who he was. Moses knew he was God's servant. No, he is called of God. He knew what he was going to do. That's the reason he wasn't scared of what Satan said. Satan tried to tempt him. Scare him out of it. But Moses knew where he was standing. That's right. Now, I've got to hurry. I'm skipping over page after page here. Paul, one thing I want to get here before closing. Paul made it clear to his part of the bride he will present. Paul will present part of the bride. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Paul made it clear to his part of the bride that he will present to Jesus Christ in the last days about wisdom or faith. Let's just read a little bit. I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians, the 4th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 4th chapter. We'll just read and we're going to close just in a, a few moments, the Lord willing. 1 Corinthians, the 4th chapter. And I want to read 18th to the 20th verse. All right. Here we are. Now some are puffed up as though, as though I would not come to you. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord will, and will know not the speech of any of them which are puffed up, but the power. You know, take, you know, that was the Roman church beginning to come right in there, beginning to come. See, you know, you know, the Bible said they went out from us because it wasn't of us, you see. That's right. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. See? 
not in word. You say, well, I, I'm educated, brother. i got more education you ever have. I'm, I'm a priest. I'm, I don't have one thing to do with it. It means more than you're a pig or anything else, see. See, don't have nothing to do with it, see. The devil had a lot of knowledge, too, see. All right, see, for the kingdom of God is not word, but power. See? What will you then? Well, I come unto you with a rod or in love or in spirit of meekness. Now, the second chapter, I want to finish this just a minute then before we close. The second chapter, turn over the page. Let's start right here at the first. Now, see what Paul, what he's telling the bride now. He's going to present this part of the bride to Christ and he wants them to know. Now, remember, Paul would have had some kind of a smart, he was smart, he had, but he had to forget it, he said. He had all kinds of degrees and education, but he had to forget it. Now, look, to learn Christ. And I, brethren, when I come to you, came, come not with excellently of speech or wisdom. See? I didn't come with wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God. I'm Dr. So-and-so and I have all... I'm, we're taught in the seminary so-and-so. No, no. Paul said, I didn't come to you like that with wisdom. I'm, what's my text? Wisdom versus faith. See? I didn't come to you in wisdom, Paul said, giving you a testimony of God by wisdom. Say, now look here. I'll tell you, we've learned in the seminary that the days of miracles have passed. We learned in the seminary that these things are, didn't really mean this. He said, I didn't come like that, brother. Now, what did he say? For I am determined not to know anything among you, say Jesus and Him crucified. And if I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much tribulation, I was with you. And my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. Huh? As Booth Clipper said, hello. <laughs> Who knocked then? <laughs> I didn't come to you with some seminary wisdom. But in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power that your F-A-I-T-H faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. You believe it? Amen. That your faith don't stand in the wisdom of some organization but in the power of God. Faith in the power of God. Your hopes are not. These two sources has battled since Eden. God's faith against Satan's wisdom. God has proven in all ages that it will not mix. It must be separated to grow. Now, quickly, let me run over just, just a word or two on each one. Just take a few things that I got wrote here. Esau and Jacob was a perfect type. Both of them religious. Both of them twins. Esau was the ecclesiastical type. He was a man that was smart. He had a, had a good moral stands and things like that. But he didn't have no use for that birthright. Jacob didn't care what he had to do just so he got the birthright. And as long as they were together, they could not produce. Amen. That right. One was against the other. Have you caught it? Amen. Amen. Yes. Come out from amongst it. Be separate, saith God, and touch not their unclean things. I'll receive you. Hmm? Jacob had to separate himself from his denominational brother before God had ever blessed him. Amen. God told Abraham the same thing. Amen. Israel and Moab. The 400 prophets of Israel stood before Micah. And Micah separated himself from him. He got the word of the Lord and come back with it. <laughs> Moses and Korah, same thing. Wouldn't mix. They had to separate. Is that true? Amen. Abraham and Lot. Amen. Lot was a religious man, type of the formal church. But as long as Lot was with Abraham, 
He journeyed for years with him, but he would, God would not bless him till he fully obeyed him and separated himself from Lot. The denominational church. Then as soon as Abraham separated himself and come out to walk alone, God said, Now, Abraham, stand up. Look east, west, north, south, and it's all yours. <laughs> but he didn't do it until he fully separated himself. That's exactly right. God could not bless Seth until he separated him from Cain. He marked Cain and sent him to the land of Nod. And Cain was his smart wisdom, become scientist and everything else. <laughs> Grow a crop of that. And saith under his righteousness and the love and faith in the word of God, he growed a crop and produced a prophet that warned the last days. That's right. Saved every believer. And the wisdom destroyed every one of them. Every one died. Every one, no matter how many degrees in psychology they had and everything else, they perished in the judgments of God. And everything outside of the true born-again Spirit of God that believes every word of that and stands right on will perish in the judgments of God. You see these little twisters going down the street and all this carrying on and carrying on like that. Remember, it's nothing in the world but fodder for the judgment. The rock it'll got to, it's just bound to. Women, wake up. I got a little testimony, but I ain't got time to tell it. Of a little lady here not long ago in California. I was riding up the road, waiting to be called into the tent. Run along there a little bitty. It's, it's disgraceful. No doubt a pretty little girl. And she's going along there twisting this little cowboy hat on, boots and tassels hanging on, twisting up the road. Every man blowing at her and waving all them like that. I thought I just ought to stop. If it wasn't the preacher, the media was long, I would. I said, Look, sister, I want to tell you something. You may be pretty, you can prove that. You might be able to make cars slide, brakes, and twist around here. Boys whistle like wolves and everything. But one of these days, that little body, the bugs and worms will crawl into it and eat it away. And maybe in six weeks from now, it'll be that way, rotten laying here in the grave. But that soul that's in you, feeding on that lust, will live in a devil's hell for for ages to come. Mm. Moses. In Korah, Lot, Abraham, John, the Baptist, and the publicans, Jesus, and the denominational churches of his days. See? Faith, wisdom. Well, that priest could stand up and say, well, we, he said, yes, we have us, our Father, we did so and so. That yes, you with your traditions made the commandments of God of none effect. Teaching for a doctrine and commandments of man. He said, well, who are you to teach us? What school did you come from? He said, the works that I do testify of me. If I don't do the works of the Messiah, then don't believe me. And if I do the works of the Messiah, then you know you believe the works. He said, they testify of me. If I don't do the works, then don't believe it. He had them denominationals too back there with their wisdom. Jesus had faith. Faith in what? What he was, God's son. See? All right, St. Martin with the Roman church. In the days of the Reformation, I mean, when they, when, before they went into the pagan Rome, when she began to come to the Roman church, Martin stood out there and protested that dogma of that Catholic church, done signs and wonders and miracles, and his churches and all of them spoke in tongues and prophesied and great things, and the power of God was with him. He raised the dead and healed the sick and everything else, and there's that Catholic church over there protesting like that and trying to have him burnt and everything else. What was it? Wisdom. Faith. Same now. Let us share the cap of all of it. Zechariah 4, 6 is why I'm going to close that right here. The Bible said, Not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit, saith the Lord. Not by wisdom, not by knowledge, not by nomination, but with my spirit, I will what? Energize my word. Hallelujah. The disciples had it sowed into them, and the spirit come to energize the word. See? Not by power, not by might, not by wisdom, not by understanding, not by this, not by that, but by my spirit, I will energize my word. Hallelujah. By my spirit, saith the Lord. It's the water of the word of faith. 
that energizes the Word of God and makes it work. Which will win? It looks like right now, of course, that wisdom is going to work. But it won't. It won't. It looks like right now that the little church that believes the full Word of God is, is certainly in the minority. But don't you worry. The Bible said, Fear not, little flock. It's your Father's good will to give you the kingdom. Don't no fear. Just stay in faith. Stay right with the Word. Don't leave the Word. Stay with the Word. Do you love Him? Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Amen. Will you believe Him? Amen. 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 Let's sing it. Do you love Him? Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Do you believe Him? Amen. 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 Do you love Him? Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Will you believe Him? Amen. 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 Oh, I love Him, don't you? Amen. What is it? By faith, not by wisdom. Amen. By faith are we saved. Is that right? Amen. Not by wisdom, not by knowledge. By my Spirit, saith the Lord. Now, let them soak down into that church that copper wire. That's a conductor. Now, aluminum wire isn't a conductor. It isn't. No, a rubber hose isn't a conductor. It's an insulator. <laughs> Wood is an insulator. We don't want any insulations. <laughs> we got too much of it now and it makes isolations. <laughs> so we, we, want, we want conductors. Born again men and women who believe the Word of God. Now, what did the dynamo said? Ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Now, what do you do? Plug in. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that right? Amen. Just plug in. That's all you have to do. And the current comes flowing right down the line. What happens? The Word starts growing. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. The name of His Lord. leaves shall not wither. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly is not so. The ungodly is not so. I don't say the sinner now, the ungodly. See? Yeah, That's right. the one who claims to be and is ungodly with it, you see. That's right. Ungodly is not so. They can't stand in the judgment with the righteous. No, sir. They certainly can't. So the time has come. The seed is sown. Those who are predestinated. Predestinated is the only way there are... I could take Revelations 12 right now and 13 and prove to you that just though the Bible said that this Antichrist that was coming up on the earth would deceive all, A double L, all that was upon the face of the earth with these denominations and creeds, he would deceive all upon the face of the earth, every one of them except those who were predestinated Amen. before the foundation of the world. So, brother, you can't do nothing about it. Just holler, Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, my, I love that. Yes, sir. Do you love Him? Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Do you believe Him? Amen. 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 Why don't you practice that a little bit around here, y'all? I like that song, don't you? That was our Phoenix Conventional song. Oh, I love it. I love it. Let's sing it again. Do you love Him? Amen. Will you serve Him? Amen. Will you believe Him? Amen. 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 Well, you just keep on going, you know. Will you worship Him? And all of them just keep on going over and over. My, we got to start there. Things we like to the place to pieces. <laughs> yes, sir. Amen. 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 Are you plugged in this morning? Amen. <laughs> Turn the switch. Amen. You got the current. Amen. 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 Now it will grow. Amen. Bear fruit. Amen. You 
will show it. Amen. 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 Oh, isn't that wonderful? Amen. So wonderful. I'm sorry to keep you all here all this time, but I'm just having a jubilee myself. Oh, my it's a wonderful time. All right. Next Sunday now, everybody that's around, I, now I'm going up to Brother Littlefield's to spread a little word, probably just take some of this word here scattered up there amongst them, Church of God, like that. And uh, I'll probably just speak on something I did here. Of course, you're welcome to come, but they've got a little bit of church there. See, it's 1,500 are just dedicated. And uh, about a couple of years ago, it's going to be squeezed up. But I promise Brother Littlefield, he's a precious brother. And a man keeps his promise if he can. The Lord willing, I'll go up there. There'll be church here at the tabernacle. You people come right here at the tabernacle. Surround and things you can. Come right ahead. And then the following Sunday, remember, Brother Oregon Wright will be here now with Brother Roll. You'll sure enjoy Brother Roll. All right. Let's uh, turn the service now to Brother Neville. See what he's got to tell us now. Lord bless you.